What's up guys with the recent conclusion of the greatest metagame of all time being featured in two team tournaments, there was a general desire to update the resources for this tier, and thus this wonderful thread you see on your screen was created. Updating the resources means updating the viability rankings, and that is what today's video is about. Since after a big tournament, or after a big couple tournaments, then any given tier generally undergoes some community consensus viability ranking updates. Uh, the people who have been playing the tier recently will chime in with their latest thoughts on the metagame and uh, how to order the Pokemon by availability, and then you kind of average that all out and you have the new viability ranking list. Uh, now, do take it with a grain of salt because the differences can be kind of small, like, uh, no, well, I think Latios is better than Latios right now in DPP Ubers. And uh, they are still, of course, Latios and Latios. They're still great Pokemon. And uh, you can kind of take that into account and see, oh, well, I wonder why Latios is better than Latios right now. But you definitely shouldn't discount Latios because, well, you, you shouldn't have a mindset that sounds something like, well, currently Latios is less viable, therefore I will totally ignore it in my building and I will be totally fine. You know, that, that doesn't work. Uh, to give an example from an OU tier that might be more familiar to a lot of people, uh, a couple of years ago, people were really down on Aerodactyl in the tier, to the point where they were making teams completely destroyed by Aerodactyl because they thought, oh, well, it's not viable right now, so, uh, you know, I can afford to be weak to it, which is complete nonsense. It's still Aerodactyl. You still have to be ready for it. So, uh, similar kind of thing. So, that's... Uh, one part of it, but it's not that simple. On the other hand, you also want to you know update the viability rankings because it's cool to look at the little things that have been going on in the metagame that might lead to Latios being preferred over Latios. Uh, to, for uh, just as an example, because uh, a, a long time ago, then I remember Latios was preferred over Latios even on more offensive teams, and now it's kind of flipped. So it's fun to explore that, and that's the basic idea. It's nice to have the most updated resources, and it's also fun to put them together. So uh, that's what we will be doing today. This will be my contribution to the uh, 2021 DPP Ubers viability rankings update, because this is a lot more fun than writing a lengthy post. So let's get started. The general consensus among everyone who has played this tier recently is that Dialga is the best. It just has so many fantastic qualities. Its bulk is tremendous. Uh, it's really strong. It has a great offensive move pool. It has a great support move pool. And the biggest thing is its typing. Uh, dragon Steel means that it is a dragon that is neutral to other dragon moves. And that is really, really huge considering all the Draco Meteors that get thrown around in this tier. Matter of fact, uh, there are not too many Steel types that you just love throwing on teams. I mean, things like uh, Bronzong and Jirachi and Skarmory and Scizor and, you know, occasionally Fortress. They're okay and all, but they're still not easy to fit on teams. And sometimes they're not even that great of Draco Meteor sponges, depending on the set. Uh, so, support Dialga, which is super easy to slap on teams, often becomes an impromptu Draco Meteor Sponge. Now, we're not talking boosted Draco Meteors. We're not talking throwing it into Soldu Latios or, you know, Specs Dialga. See, uh, Specs, another great set Dialga can run. But uh, for things like uh, Scarf Draco Meteors or like a Scarf Palkia Spatial Rend, then uh, Spadef Dialga is one of the best sponges to it because just being able to you know tank a couple of those hits can be a lot in the sort of bam bam games that you get in DPP Ubers where every turn is crucial and uh, you know as games progress then you know sometimes you you won't be able to avoid those KOs and Diaga gives you that kind of interim sponge it's also a great stealth rocker uh, because it gets a lot of opportunity uh, as a result of that defensive prowess against not just dragon moves, but Kyogre. So being able to sponge a lot of dragon dragon moves and Kyogre means that Dialga is seeing a lot of action in every single game, gets up rocks easily. 
Uh, makes for a great 1-2 hazard set in combination with a uh, lead spiker because a lot of the Pokemon that are going to beat the lead spiker uh, then Dialga can come in on. It's uh, It very often comes in on a Giratina Origin trying to Shadow Sneak, for example. So if you set up spikes with DOS, Giratina Dracos you down, you go to Dialga on the sneak, and now you threaten it out and get up your rocks. So, yeah, support Dialga is great. Uh, it has a lot of options, you know, rocks, dragon move, thunder, uh, or if you're running it on a sun team, well, you still might want to run thunder because you're using it to switch into Kyogre, but you can do a lot there. Uh, and in the last slot, you can run another coverage move, you can run Roar, which is the most common, you can run Protect, which has become increasingly common, because every bit of health counts when you're trying to sponge all these Draco Meteors, and uh, being able to maximize Dialga's recovery just makes it even more of a great defensive Pokemon. Uh, so, there's also uh, Dialga's typing, affording it a resistance to Stealth Rock, which is fantastic, I mean, put it this way, Kyogre is sometimes annoyed by its Stealth Rock neutrality in this tier, uh, just because you really need every single percentage you can get, and not getting worn down by rocks is really, really huge. Uh, same for the occasional Sandstorm, although that is rare. So, yeah, Dialga is incredibly resilient. Uh, now, you can't use it as a pure defensive steel type, uh, but simply using it as a support dragon that can also take on other dragons is just good enough. <laughs> uh, so, And it still has the benefit of its uh, steel typing uh, for pretty much everything besides dragon. And uh, yeah, being a steel type that resists water is just a phenomenal trait, as Ferrothorn would go on to teach us. So, Dialga is not just a support stealth rocker though, although it is amazing at that, and it's his most common set. But Scarf is great because it cleans up really hard. Uh, it checks a lot of dangerous stuff, like uh, Swords Dance Lucario and you know mixed Rayquaza, uh, or you know even the rarer SD Rayquaza, uh, because its steel typing means it resists extreme speed and it's massively physically bulky. Uh, this also goes for support Dialga, is that even a stab super effective earthquake from Groudon or Kyogre or uh, Groudon or Kyogre, Groudon or Garchomp isn't necessarily going to take it out. Uh, you know, once they get boosted, then yes, th that's more trouble, but it's got a huge, huge defense stat. So, uh, that's also really nice for it in on the Scarf set. And uh, on Scarf, it goes more offensive. It With hazards down, it's Draco Meteor is tough to switch into. Its uh, offensive move pool is on full display, rain or shine. It's got Fire Blast, Thunder. You, know, you can clean up with Dragon Pulse if you don't want to go minus two and you just need to hit a couple to win the game. Uh, so it, it, it can really do whatever. It often runs Sleep Talk. It's not a great Darkrai Absorber, but Darkrai is really tough to check. So as long as you don't switch right into a Focus Blast, then you're generally okay. But you got to be careful about the weather, too. Uh, if you're Sleep Talking, Fire Blast, and Thunder, and uh, you know Rain or Sun might put a damper on that. So some people run Aura Sphere. Uh, to be safer against uh, Darkrai. But yeah, I, I generally don't like Sleep Talk on it. It just feels like kind of a hindrance, but it doesn't really matter. I do like Stealth Rock on uh, Scarf Dialga. I think it can afford... Uh, Scarf Stealth Rock is really cool if you can afford it, and Dialga definitely can afford it with all the free switches it gets and the switches it forces from your opponent. So Scarf, it's a great cleaner. It's a great mid-game attacker. And not so much against like super bulky stall teams, but super bulky stall teams are on the rarer side. Uh, and in those, you know, bam bam games where every other turn is a KO, then having a faster Pokemon that, you know, drops a stab Draco Meteor, that can often be a KO. So Dialga really just does it all. Uh, and this is just with two sets, you know, Support and Scarf are its calling cards, but uh, Bulk Up Dialga is incredibly good. Uh, takes its, resist its uh, resilience and turns it into a sweeping threat. Uh, there's uh, that one's become really popular. Whether the classic bulk up rest talk or sub protect or roar stuff that really abuses pressure. Uh, that's another thing about Dialga and its protect variants, whether it's support or the bulk up stuff. Uh, it's got pressure and Draco meteors and you know, spatial rends. You know they only have eight PP, so uh, you can really put yourself out of range and help yourself play around the threat that way. So. 
Uh, Diago can really, I'm pretty sure you could use nearly any moves on Diaga and uh, it would be good. Oh, I didn't even mention Thunder Wave on the support set, but it doesn't even need to run uh, Thunder Wave on the pure support set. It can also run a variety of just attacking sets, uh, like mixed traditionally, like Draco, Fire Blast, Brick Break, Outrage, that kind of thing. You know, f slot in Thunder uh, or, and, and uh, other things like... Well, it's, it's even Stealth Rock. It can run the more offensive Stealth Rock uh, support variant while still being... Yeah, that's the thing about uh, Rocking Dialga. It can it, it can uh, go defensive and offensive and kind of do both at the same time. Like, even a plus special defense Dialga can still run Draco Meteor, uh, which you actually really like over Dragon Pulse uh, a lot of the time to hit things like Groudon uh, harder, but also being able to Oko, Giratina Origin, and Latios uh, is really, really nice uh, when push comes to shove, as it so often does. Uh, so I actually kind of like that. Of course, Dragon Pulse is consistent. But so e even with like no special attack investment and uh, just a completely bulky spread, then Draco Meteor is still good because Draco Meteor is such an offensive threat in this tier. And on the offensive sets, then you, of course, dial that up to 11. You don't get all the bulk, obviously, but you're still bulky enough to go one-on-one -on -one with Kyogre a lot. Uh, and uh, tank Latios from full and things like that. You can run a, you can run lefties. You can run uh, life orb is rare now, but you could do that. I, I would only do that on like the really offensive set. But since Dialga's you know best trait is its defensive utility in co in combination with its offensive stuff, then I don't like really biting into that with life orb recoil. Expert belt is really good. Uh, resistance berries are just uh, fighting or uh, chopple, shuka. Those are really nice. So yeah, you can run that kind of offensive, all-purpose set. You can slot in Thunder Wave there if you want. Uh, rocks. Uh, yeah, it, it can really do anything. Like Bulk up uh, Draco Meteor Outrage is a good set, just to give you an idea. It's, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, Dialga really does it all. It fits on every single team, almost without fail. This is not to say that it is used on every team, but you could find a place for it on every team. And uh, it succeeds on a game-to-game -game basis effortlessly. It finds its way in, and it does its thing. Uh, yeah. Oh, I mentioned Specs too. Now that is that is a monster. So, yeah, Dialga is uh, pretty much the best. Uh, so next up we have Giratina Origin, which I used to consider the best for a long time, and it's still. I mean, number two is not shabby. Uh, most people think of Giratina Origin as oh that thing that makes sure you can't spin. And yeah, it does that, but it's also a great Pokemon in its own right. It doesn't just protect spikes, as evidenced by its use on teams that don't even have spikes. Uh, it's just a great Pokemon in general because its typing is really unique, and uh, it's got great bulk, and uh, being immune, immune to opposing spikes is also really nice, actually. It's one of Dialga's very few flaws. Uh, so you can get in there, you can get in on a Groudon Earthquake, uh, Garchomp Earthquake, uh, if it's scarfed, of course, you can take you know things like uh, it can take Palkia Spatial Rend after rocks, <laughs> so it, it doesn't mind something like a Groudon Dragon Claw much at all. And uh, it, it's in addition to this great natural defensive utility because it's still so bulky with that enormous HP and solid defenses. Uh, it also hits really hard. Uh, its stabs are boosted by the Grisius Orb that it requires. The Grisius Orb that also makes it immune to Trick, underrated against annoying Scarf Rachi, uh, and. Uh, it's so it's Draco Meteor is always hitting hard and it's Shadow Sneak. I mean, its priority is just so, so good against things like the Lottie Twins and Mewtwo and just anything that's weakened, really. I mean, oh, well, the Palkia is left at 10% or the Garchomp or whatever. Whoops. Well, Giratina Origin will finish it off, no problem. Uh, it's got a great, great move pool in addition to those. Uh, on its, you know, it can run all out offensive sets with Earthquake, Thunder, HP Fire, Outrage. It can go more on the utility side with things like Will-O-Wisp and Roar, or it can mix and match. It's uh, it's crazy how much it can do. Uh, pretty much the only move Giratina Origin always has is Shadow Sneak. Uh, it used to run like sub-call mindsets a lot in uh, Platinum, pre-Heart Gold and Soul Silver, because it didn't have Shadow Sneak then, so one of its go-to sets was uh, sub-call mind, which you know, is still okay now. Uh, generally, you really love Shadow Sneak, though. That's a big part of what makes Giratina Giratina. 
what you can do is run, because it only really needs like two attacking moves with Calm Mind, or special attacking moves, so like Dragon Pulse, Aura Sphere. Uh, then you can run Calm Mind, Dragon Pulse, Aura Sphere, Shadow Sneak if you want. Uh, so uh, that lets you muscle through annoying things like uh, Groudon, Kyogre, Dialga really nicely because you get that nice special defense boost. Harder to revenge kill. It's an underrated one. And uh, you're still an offensive... And you still have those revenge killing capabilities of Shadow Sneak. So being able to mix and match moves like this is you know part of why... A big part of why Giratina Origin is so great. It... Uh, it tanks the hits, it dishes the hits out, it has priority, it can really do it all. Even if uh, there's something annoying like a Rain Bronzong that doesn't mind any of its hits, then you can still Will-O-Wisp it, and a burned Bronzong is ruined. Uh, oh, you can go all physical, you can run Dragon Claw if you want to, if you don't want to split EVs, because uh, when you want a Draco Meteor and Shadow Sneak, then those are on opposite sides of the spectrum, and you want both of them to be invested. You know, you don't want Groudon eating your Draco Meteor too easily, and you want your Shadow Sneak to actually finish things off. Uh, so sometimes you can run Dragon Claw, Shadow Sneak, you know, EQ, uh, Will-O-Wisp, that's a good one. You can throw in Roar in there. It can really, really do it all. So, uh, yeah, that's that's Giratina for you. Uh, spin blo And of course it spin blocks really well. <laughs> Uh, you know, even Kabo Kabutops has become uh, more popular in recent years because it can potentially threaten Giratina, but Giratina still eats it up, especially if it invests in physical defense, as it often does. So, uh, yeah, great, great Pokemon. Uh, oh, and when it goes fast and, you know, gets the jump on the other 90s, that 90 speed tier is really crowded. This goes for Dialga too, of course. Um, but it doesn't really commonly go super fast, so when you go plus speed, you get a... Uh, it turns into a pretty good Lucario check, in fact. So, uh, yeah, make use of that extreme speed immunity, which cleaves through so many other Ubers. So, uh, and of course, uh, you have to have a move that hits it, but, uh, yeah, I really can't nail down a preference for Garatina Origin set because they're all so, you know, fluid, and you can kind of throw in one set and slap it anywhere. Not, not that you should, of course, you should consider what your team needs, but J Giratina Origin just existing is enough to facilitate many teams and make it successful on a game-to-game -game basis. It's not like you're using it just for the spin block. Uh, almost never. You're using it, because if that was your only purpose, then you could just use the much bulkier Giratina uh, Altered. Uh, but yeah, Giratina Origin does it all, similarly to Dialga, and it, uh, if it got rocks, then it probably would be, oh, I don't know if it'd be at Dialga's level, but it'd be really close. So, oh, and I should also mention that unlike Dialga, Giratina Origin also makes a great lead because with its great priority and its great strength, then it limits pretty much every lead that wants to set up two layers of hazards to just one. So, uh, yeah, Giratina Origin's awesome. Now we go to the S minuses. Not quite as well. Okay, they're still incredibly dominant. They're just not as. Uh, I, I think they are a small step below the two we have just gone over. So first, Kyogre, uh, you know, rules the tier with an Iron Flipper. It uh, it doesn't Water Spout. Its calling card used to be Specs Water Spout, which you know, two KOs Blissey, and you know, you need Latias or Palkia or you know, Quagsire or Ludicolo, and things like that. It doesn't use that as much anymore, simply because uh, the lead metagame, which will have its own video uh, as well, of course, uh, because it, it's gotten so aggressive with early hazards that you're never really firing off uh, Specs Water Spouts early on. Not that you can't, of course, uh, but it also, it, it does uh, have that going for it. Uh, it doesn't have that going for it as much anymore. It still can run specs to great effect, but it's not about the water spout. It's about really trashing a Latias switch in with Ice Beam, or just completely, you know, making it tough for even Dialga to switch in to uh, Surf or Hydro Pump. Especially Hydro Pump, underrated option. Like, uh, I know Water Spout is its uh, you know, calling card on specs, but I really like Hydro, Surf, Ice Beam, Thunder. You know, it, it's more reliable that way. Uh, so... It's still really strong, but but the main reason is that uh, the choice Kyogre, the preferable choice Kyogre is Scarf because you know in this tier which is has so much offense in it, then speed is of course killer, and being able to outrun and threaten things is really nice uh, to give Kyogre as many opportunities as possible, so it doesn't have to uh, take a Darkrai hit before threatening it, for example, 
or so it can switch right into Darkrai, rather, you know, uh, or s something similar with Mewtwo. Uh, just a great Pokemon. Great, it's like Scarf Dialga, really threatening, great cleaner, uh, more vulnerable to rocks, of course, and uh, and spikes and uh, T spikes. Uh, that's another trait that Dialga and Giratina Origin share that they are unaffected by toxic spikes, which is really good. In fact, one of the reasons T spikes are so good is because they affect Kyogre and Groudon. Uh, so Kyogre is you know really vulnerable to hazards, but it's still just so powerful. Scarf is great, Specs is great, it has a, and it of course has a lot of variety to it. Uh, so, uh, oh, a Modest Scarf is also fantastic because uh, one of the most prominent checks is Latios, and it does not like Modest Scarf Ice Beam at all. So, and you can definitely afford Modest. Uh, you know, the reason you would run Timid is generally... Not really the tie as much. I mean, it, it definitely can be useful considering how uh, quick or how common uh, Scarf Dialga is, but it's more for outrunning Deoxys Attack, which is really rare and uh, outside the lead slot. Uh, so I, I'm a big fan of Modest. Modest is uh, really strong, and the difference is noticeable because, as we've established already, every percent counts. So uh, that's a really it, it's a threat even with Scarf which is not a trait you say for... You don't typically think of Scarfers as a huge threat, but Scarf Dialga you do, Scarf Kyogre you definitely do. So, uh, it of course has other sets. Uh, it can run some cool, bulky rest stuff, you know, the Spidef Rest Talk Roar thing that became popular in Gen f uh, 5 to absorb Darkrai effectively. That one's really good. You know, phase around hazard damage. Uh, good check to opposing, you know, Scarf Draco Meteors and Scarf Kyogres, actually. Uh, kind of functions like a Spadef Dialga in that sense. Uh, and it can also run, like, Rest Call Mind stuff. Uh, with Rest Hawk, it can be really tough to uh, stop once it gets going. Especially with uh, Bold and a lot of defense investment. It can be fairly unbreakable for a lot of teams. Uh, it can also run... Uh, on the support side... It can uh, spread, well, in addition to Rest Hog Roar, it can also run some Thunder Wave stuff. It can run, like, three attacks, Thunder Wave, like Hydro or Surf, Ice Beam, Thunder, Thunder Wave. Or it can slot in Calm Mind over uh, Thunder, which, you know, you're worse against other Kyogre, but it's still you know, T-Waving pretty much everything. And Kyogre is not really used to switch into Kyogre most of the time, unless you're Rest Hog Roar, in which case doesn't really make a difference. Uh, and Thunder Wave is ruinous for the Lottie Twins. And uh, generally, you don't like switching into it, period. It's, you know, slowing the opposing team down for a teammate like Groudon is really big. Kyogre and Groudon, although you wouldn't really think it because, oh, Sun and Rain Clash, they're actually great partners. So, you know, and uh, they often run T-Wave sets to support the other. So you can go 3 attacks T-Wave or Calm Mind T-Wave. Both are really good. Uh, 3 attacks T-Wave is actually a very common lead. Uh, because it wipes out Deoxys Speed in one hit, and Deoxys Speed doesn't run Sash as much these days, actually very rarely, uh, but that's for later on. So it's become a good lead. Uh, with Lum, you also beat Darkrai leads, and uh, it's just good to get T-Waves off and start hitting things really early in the game. Sets the tempo. You can come and set your rocks with Dialga after. So Lum is cool there. On uh, lefties, with uh, you, gen you generally run lefties on Calm Mind T-Wave stuff. Not a hard and fast rule, but that is uh, usually preferred for good reason. Uh, speaking of Calm Mind with only water and ice moves, then Protect is another really cool one on uh, T-Spike stuff. Then Calm Mind, Hydro, Ice, Protect. So you can uh, you know, wear down something like a Palkia. Get Lefty's Recovery, that's really big. Considering a lot of teams' uh, answer to Kyogre is just to wail on it several times. Uh, so they can finish it off with something like Garchomp. That's really big, so every bit of lefties can be really, really crucial. So, yeah, Protect Kyogre is really cool. And, uh, yeah, you won't really see Sub so much nowadays because, again, its bulk is just so valuable, and you don't really... I mean, feasibly, you could run something dumb like Sub Combine Protect, but uh, that you generally want Ice Beam because you don't want to be completely blanked by Roar Dialga. And at least a Rest Hawk Calm Mind has the defensive utility of being a sleep absorber and of healing. Uh, whereas with Sub Protect, then you're just going to be weakening yourself and not doing anything. So, you generally want Ice Beam. Uh, so, 
Yeah, the, uh, the whole protect thing also goes to show how big T-spikes are because Kyogre is weak to them, but also is a great abuser of them. So there's that. Uh, and yeah, that's that's pretty much Kyogre for you. Great. Oh, uh, I should also mention that it is great because it facilitates its teammates. I mean, it's also the little things like uh, making Bronzong a great answer to Hidden Power Fire Giratina Origin, whereas it would falter to those in the sun. But it also facilitates the swift swimmers, Kabutops and Kingdra. Kabutops on one hand spins, on the other is also just a huge offensive threat. Whereas Kingdra does not quite have that same utility, and it has a harder time breaking through Dialga because it doesn't have low kick or superpower like Kabutops does. But it has Stab Draco Meteor, which is, of course, enormous. And, uh, yeah, it has those huge Specs Water Spouts. And Kyogre er, also uh, facilitates Manaphy, which is a very underrated, very solid Pokemon. When it can rest freely with hydration, it becomes a good Darkrai Absorber in its own right, and it's just really, really tough to slow down. So, uh, yeah, Kyogre does a lot for its team, and uh, also makes it easy to spam Thunder, of course, for everything. Uh, which, you know, can be annoying, because you don't want to switch into the th uh, Thunders with those 30% paralysis rates flying around. But it also opens up uh, Thunder as an offensive tool for your own pokes. So, next up we have Groudon. Now, Groudon does not have that same level of dominance as Kyogre. Its, uh, it's stab is not uh, boosted by its weather. Uh, and there aren't really chlorophyll pokes that you can uh, support with it. I mean, there are a couple, but they're not really very good. Uh, I mean, I've, I've tried Shiftry a lot, but it's, it's very disappointing. However, Groudon is still a behemoth. It has a ton, it's a massive offensive threat, and a great support Pokemon. It can also do pretty much whatever you want. Uh, its stab isn't support, isn't boosted by the sun it brings, but it's still a great user of overheat. You know, so uh, just in case Skarmory and Fortress and Bronzong think they're, you know, they should get comfortable, then, you know, forget it. Uh, or, and Lava Plume is also great because it also does that, but also spreads uh, burns really nicely. So if Kyogre wants to switch in, you know, burned. Lottie Twin, burned. Giratina Origin, burned. Uh, and it can fit that in a lot of sets. Stealth Rock Support, some people have been using uh, Protect, Toxic, Lava Plume, EQ, which is a fantastic set. Uh, massive pain to switch into. Uh, makes the best of Groudon's immense defensive typing, which makes it resistant to Stealth Rock, which is really huge, and it's immune to Thunder, which is really rare in Ubers. I mean, half the reason Thunder is so annoying is because even resists like Dialga don't like getting paralyzed. But Spadef uh, Groudon doesn't fear Dracos as much, and it can switch into Thunders and just take zero. It's wonderful. Uh, and Sun is great, not just for you know boosting fire types, you know making Heatran a huge pain, and uh, making Thunder 50% accurate, but also for just slowing down the uh, Rain Assault. So, mix and match. Of course, uh, Rain does not boost the power of Thunder, whereas Sun boosts its teammates' Fire Blasts. So, that's a really nice tool as well. Makes Dialga really impossible to switch into for a lot, with how nasty Dragon Fire coverage is. So, uh, Groudon is also, a, a, in addition to being such a great uh, facilitator, for its teammates, uh, and a great partner to Kyogre, as we've already established, with Thunder Wave. Uh, it also is a huge offensive threat because it has Swords Dance and Rock Polish. It can run one or both. It can run SDT Wave. Uh, it's so, so strong with that vicious Stab Earthquake that just rips through so much of the tier, and it's got a lot of options for the many immunities of the tier as well. Like, if you T-Wave Giratina Origin, then later your SDD Claw is just going to rip through it. Uh, and, you know, D-Claw immediately rips through the Lottie Twins as well. Uh, so, it's a really, really dangerous poke. And it does this, uh, well, it's not as dangerous with the support set, but it's, I guess it's dangerous in a different way, because nothing really likes switching into those Thunder Waves or those Burns, and, of course, this Earthquake still hits hard naturally. So, uh, it can do pretty much anything. It can... Uh, you know, it can even run rocks and swords dance on the same set if it really wants to deal with bulk up Dialga and uh, still pose a threat to bulkier teams. It can really do it all. Uh, run, it can run offensive variants of its uh, stealth rock set, just like with uh, Dialga. It can run things like Custat Berry, which I really love. Uh, one of the favorite things I have used in the last few years. 
uh, Lumberry to take away a Pokemon Darkrest, which isn't on. Make sure uh, Giratina Origin can't Will O Wisp it. That's good on, uh, you know, sweeping sets too. But on rock sets, it's great. Uh, can run Earth Plate to really devastate things with its earthquakes. You know, Kyogre suddenly starts dropping really quickly. Dialga can't take it uh, from full. Yeah, vicious, vicious Pokemon. So many cool options. And uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, support, you know, offense, kind of mix the two. Just tremendous move pool for both purposes. Uh, yeah, that, that's uh, Groudon for you. And uh, excellent facilitator of things. All right, that's pretty much it. But yeah, it's definitely S minus just because even though it doesn't have that same you know metagame shaping reach of Kyogre, it's just as good easily. Uh, it's, it's typing is different, but it really brings so much to every single team and every single battle it's in. All right, so A+. Plus. So these Pokemon are still very much the cream of the crop, very defining pokes, but uh, they are a step be uh, they're a step behind the others because they don't quite shape the metagame as much with their uh, move pools or abilities and whatnot. So we've got the Lottie twins. We're going to start with why Latios is preferred over Latios. Uh, we've mentioned how fast this tier plays a lot of the time. And Latios is stronger. Draco Meteor makes a big difference. And I will further illustrate this point by mentioning that Latios has begun using Draco Meteor a lot as well. Uh, whereas when DPP Ubers was you know more of a more, was the current gen and a few years after that, then it almost never used Draco Meteor. It was all about Call My Dragon Pulse. You know, part of this is surprise. Part of this is just you know you need that extra damage uh, and also Dialga being everywhere. You know, you really want that extra hit. You want to hit Groudon as well. You don't want to not be able to KO Giratina Origin. It's just really nice. Even Call Mind sets can run Draco Meteor effectively. So, uh, that's a big one. But that immediate power of Latios' Meteor is just uh, enormous. And uh, it's the biggest difference. And with Specs Kyogre being rarer, then you will generally be just as good as handling Kyogre, you know, with good play, of course, uh, with Latios as Latios. And uh, on super offensive teams, then people will generally say, you know what, Latios checks Kyogre well enough, and which it does, of course, and it, uh, more importantly, it brings the offense that this team needs. You, you can't really be affording to sacrifice offense for defense uh, on offense unless it's absolutely necessary. So, you know, you, you really can't ask for a better super offensive Kyogre check than Latios. Also, good switching to Groudon, that kind of thing, you know. Uh, yeah, and the big thing about the Lottie Twins is that they are the fastest dragon in the tier. So, you know, in, in a game of, you know, I'm going to Draco Meteor you, then you're going to Draco Meteor me with your faster one, and then I'm going to do the same over and over, then they are really huge uh, in this category because they are the fastest dragon type. And, you know, besides Scarfers, of course, and that means that they are pretty much always available to revenge kill whatever Draco Meteor user uh, you just went, uh, you just faced down. And of course, Scarfers will outrun them, but Scarfers are locked into a move and thus a lot more exploitable. You know, you can switch into a Scarf Chomp with a uh, with a Steel type a lot more easily. Like uh, you can go to Jirachi on Scarf Chomp's EQ, or sorry, sorry, not EQ on the Dragon Claw or Outrage, and then you turn out, for example. You don't want to switch to Jirachi on a non-scarfed Garchomp. So, uh, yeah, the Lottie's speed tier is really huge, the Lottie's defensive capabilities are really huge, the Lottie's powers are really huge. Uh, so, of course, a standard defensive Calm Mind Lottie's is still good, but with the fast pace this tier moves at, then you generally like that immediacy. So, you like that extra bulk for handling Kyogre, especially since we mentioned the scar modest Scarf Ice Beam thing. Uh, which I wouldn't say is the general consensus among Kyogre players. A lot of people do like Timid, but it's something to watch out for. And uh, but you you just need that power. So I, that's the that's the biggest shift. And uh, Latios is definitely definitely preferred. Of course, that's on offensive teams. Uh, and uh, another thing is that bulky teams are you know, less common with how hard it is to keep up with the offensive threats. Not that they're bad or not seen, but they're uh, not as prominent and dominant as the offensive uh, styles. 
So Latios gets the slight nod. Of course, you know, Latios being right behind it is... You know, if Latias was really outclassed, then it would be, you know, way, way lower. It's not. It's basically the same thing. And it, it still fits on offense nicely, but generally offense with more of a backbone. So, uh, yeah, Latios gets the slight nod, but both of them with their Dracos and then their Grass Knots for the two, you know, Groudon, Kyogre, uh, and Titar. That's a really big one. It's the strongest hit against Titar. You're know, throwing your Thunders, your HP Fires, your Serps. Uh, Latios runs Calm Mind less simply because it, it's so instant. It needs that immediate power, whereas Latios generally gets the more it gets more turns to set up that Calm Mind. Not that Latios can't use Calm Mind, but it generally prefers more options, like a fourth attack, uh, Roar, or Memento is also really cool. Those are really unique, since they punish a Pokemon trying to set up on a minus two Draco Latios, and, or Latios, sorry. And that's really big, because that's what a lot of teams will do. They'll sack something to a Draco Meteor, and then they send in some like Rock Polish Groudon. So that, that's a huge fear, considering how badly Rock Polish Ground ripped through offense. So you don't want to be helpless in such a scenario. Uh, Memento is also really cool for setting up your own teammates. So uh, Latias generally doesn't Healing Wish, uh, but I'm, I'm sure it could if you really wanted it to. But generally, uh, it's more about p providing the support, whereas Latia Latios is more aggressive and more willing to go down after minus twoing to keep the offensive pressure going. So those are the Lotties. Darkrai. Darkrai is huge because sleep is dumb, and it's really fast. Uh, I mean, it's the Lotties are already considered quite fast, and Darkrai outruns them. And it's got sleep, and uh, super effective stab Dark Pulse, and it's tough to switch into Focus Blast when the most common Steel type, Dialga, does not, you know, resist. Or it's tough to switch into because it's, uh, yeah, the most common Steel type that resists Dark Pulse, Dialga, oh, it gets dropped by Focus Blast, so... And, uh, yeah, being able to shut something down. I mean, D uh, Darkrai functions even when everyone's running Lumberries and Sleep Talks for it. But uh, what really makes it so nasty, besides its speed, uh, is I think it's uh, last move slot, which really just makes it already great. It could function with Dark Pulse, Dark uh, Void, and Focus Blast easily, but that last move slot really makes it nasty. You can nasty plot so you aren't being uh, annoyed by Bronzong, or defensive Jirachi, especially if you run Lumberry, uh, the item makes it even nastier. Uh, you can run Sucker Punch, which I really love. You know, no more Scarf Kyogre from low health picking you off. No more Mewtwo. Uh, it's really, really great. You can run Thunder, and suddenly Kyogre does not check you almost at all. Manaphy uh, either. Uh, and you can also run Will-O-Wisp, which ruins Bronzong, ruins Jirachi, ruins Scizor. A great tool to throw out just uh, on a switch after a Dark Void to ruin... Uh, and it's also nice in a one-on-one -on -one against something like Groudon. You can run Thunder Wave for nasty dual status. Uh, it's, it's just brutal. Uh, Scarf Darkrai is also a great Pokemon. You add Trick to that list of viable moves you can run. And it's a great lead because that fast Dark Void shuts down uh, Deoxys' speed and Deoxys' attack. And uh, other spikers like uh, Frostlass... And uh, the occasional Quillfish or Omastar, or not Omastar, sorry. Um, yeah, Quillfish was the other one. Cloister, Cloister, that's the one. Uh, so that lead sleep is really, really nice. Uh, another reason why Kyogre is such a nice lead with Lum. Oh, uh, Darkrai also completely shuts down Giratina Origin leads, so it has a great matchup spread. Uh, Rayquaza doesn't run Lum, it prefers uh, Sash. I mean, not that it can't run Lum, but it usually runs Sash. So, it, uh, you really, really love having the Lum there, or the Dark Ride, uh, Dark Void there. It can really do it all. I've even liked Wide Lens on Dark Ride a lot, on the mid-game stuff, just because ensuring you hit Dark Void, you know, going from 80 to 88 is huge. You know, having a more accurate Focus Blast, or, you know, even Will-O-Wisp can be really, really great. So, uh, yeah, can, Dark Ride can really do it all. Uh, maybe not all. The reason it's uh, lower than the others is because it doesn't really have great def a defensive profile, pretty much at all. Its defense comes from, you know, coming in on double switches uh, and being faster than things and threatening sleep. That's when it's at its most dangerous. Right, so it definitely takes some, you, you gotta be careful to, or else it can potentially flub, but it is a really, really nasty Pokemon. Great lead, great mid-game Pokemon, can really do whatever you'd like. So, uh, yeah, Darkrai is awesome, and that is why it is so highly ranked. 
Uh, next up, we have Deoxys Speed. Okay, Deoxys Speed can function outside the lead slot, but by and large, it is a lead, which does hold it back a little. But we're still talking about an A-plus Pokemon, a solid A-plus Pokemon here, uh, because it is just the de the defining lead of this tier. Uh, with, whether it's its you know standard South Rock Spikes Taunt set or one of its funkier sets that it runs to counter the things that try to counter the standard Sash set, you know, with a Trick Scarf, which is also great for opposing DOS uh, and just in general, or one of its Lum or Culber variants with attacking moves, whether it's going Rocks and Spikes or just Spikes and leaving Rocks to something like Dialga or Groudon. Uh, it's just such a fantastic Pokemon. And it can really be tweaked to whatever you want it to do. And getting up those early hazards is huge for facilitating the monsters in this tier. So it sets it, it gets its teams off to great starts. It can regularly mess with the leads that are supposed to mess with it. Like Culber Superpower, you know, just ruins T or low kick, whatever. Ruins uh, T Tar, thinking it's got a good matchup. Uh, great, great Pokemon. And uh, really, really defining. All right, next up we have, yeah, thank God that was short. Next up we have Garchomp, whose stab combination is vicious, because the only thing that resists Dragon is Steel, and that, of course, gets torn apart by Stab Earthquake. The two exceptions are Bronzong and Skarmory, and while those are great, they are, number one, not fit on every team, far from it. Number two, destroyed by a plus two Fire Fang in Sun. Yeah, Garchomp's uh, flagship set is Scarf, because it outruns... Yes, continue watching, please. Uh, yeah, so it's flagship set of Scarf because it outruns all the other common Scarfers, you know, Dialga, Kyogre, even the faster one in Palkia. So that makes it great for late game cleaning. Uh, especially because they're, like we mentioned with Dialga, you know, Dialga is a Draco or Dragon Move Sponge because there aren't a lot of, like, true steals. And that is really good, and that's why Dialga's a great cleaner with uh, late game Draco Meteors and Dragon Pulses. And that goes double for Garchomp because it's so much faster. Uh, and it just rips through everything with Outrage. I mean, obviously you have to be careful of being like soft checked by things like uh, Groudon. But it's got a... Uh, or, you know, Diaga, of course. Because uh, its attack stat is not through the roof by Uber standards. But, I mean, against most things, it's going gonna, it's gonna to terrify them. And uh, it's also really nice that it can, it can threaten uh, the Lottie Twins with a stab move without... You, without a, a drawback, like, for example, Scarf Dialga cannot threaten the Lottie Twins from full without Draco Meteor, because a Dragon Pulse will come up short, and uh, Garchomp doesn't have to do that, doesn't have to use Outrage either, because it has Dragon Claw, so it's really easy to soften up its checks, like, uh, gra yeah, Groudon's a good check, but, you know, with those spikes from DOS, and, you know, switching into a Dragon Claw or two, it's not going to be long before it's in range. Now, that's just the Scarf set, though, which is, of course, a great set, but, you know, it being Scarf means that sometimes you lose out on the full power of Garchomp's stab combination. Uh, I do also like Choice Band. That's a forgotten monster, because... Uh, but it's the non-Scarf sets where Garchomp really shines, I think, because it's so naturally fast for the tier, and that gets let's it uh really make the most of that stab combination like uh we consider palkia which is already because we have the base 90s and then we have rayquaza which gets the jump on the base 90s and then we have palkia which get which gets the jump on rayquaza that's already considered fast and garchomp outruns all of those and it has swords dance so it is just vicious and it ensures it's really hard to wall with sd firefang i mean because lugia is really hard to uh, use. I mean, it used to be a staple, but uh, we'll get to Lugia's issues later. Uh, it's still a good Pokemon, but just so many problems. And uh, that was really the only true check to uh, Garchomp's SD set. Uh, so, you uh, with the SD variant being able to rip through any team, like with uh, on a team with Groudon, then you just you know, set up the Sun, and even Bronzong and Skarm aren't safe. And, you know, things like uh, the faster Lottie Twins, they don't want to switch in because they fear Dragon Claw. And even Revenge Killing, it can be tough because it often runs Habenberry. I'm not a huge fan of this because you still die to Latios Draco, but it can still be nice for something like uh, Scarf Dialga at full. You need a lot of special defense, which is annoying, and you have to be at absolute full health, so it can be ruined by hazards, which is why I'm not as uh, huge on it. But it can still be nice for things like Scarf Palkia, 
uh, opposing Scarf Chomp. So SD Habin is really cool. Uh, some players have experimented with rocks on SD Chomp because that's the thing. That stab combination is great, and yeah, Sunny Fire Fang is nice, but you know Zong and Scarf can be dealt with through other matter through other pokes. Like uh, Groudon can lure them really nicely, and uh, you can just have a you can have a more concerted wall breaking eff uh, effort with your other pokes like Dialga and uh, Hazards in conjunction with Giratina and things like that. So you don't really have to Fire Fang on Chomp. Because outside of Skarm and Zong, it's fairly useless. You know, you don't need to have Fire Fang for Scizor. Uh, so, being able to really get the most out of it. Like, uh, Stealth Rock SD is really cool, because Garchomp is fast and you know, scares out a lot. Has a really nice immunity to Choice Thunders, which is, uh, of course, a great trait. Uh, but, and it can get up rocks early, and uh, as it scares, that's something like Dialga. But where it really shines is its sub Salix set. So here you blend the. I mean, you already have. You still have the immediate speed of being able to threaten out things like Palkia and Dialga and Giratina, and uh, you know just ripping through so much of the tier. You have that SD thing, but you can also sub down to Salic and really make use of your speed by outrunning those Scarfers for a late game sweep. Of course, you become vulnerable to priority, but hey. Uh, so it's uh, Garchomp's just. It can really do pretty much anything it wants. You know, Scarf, Band, Rocks, uh, a, you know, a variety of SD sets. Uh, so, I mean, you could run Rocks, uh, Dragon Claw, EQ, Fire Move if you really wanted. And uh, you could act as a sort of Dialga, and that would free up your Dialga to do something else. Uh, there's a lot of, like uh, we've established all the pokes so far, there's a lot of variety in sets. And... Uh, yeah, it also applies to Garchomp. Although Chomp is more simple, I mean simple, because generally it's just that stab combination carrying it. it the other moves and options are really just uh, accentuating how threatening it is. Uh, for the SD set, I really love Lum. I, I don't think it can be overestimated how nice Lum is. Uh, you know, being able to shrug off T-spikes even just once is so, so good. Or uh, or like a Toxic or from a Bronzong. Or a Darkrai, of course. Or uh, something like Heatran, because a lot of teams uh, with Groudon on, on it, you know, once Latios, Dracos, or Jirachi comes in, then Heatran will switch in on you, and you really want to be able to shrug it off, even just once. You know, just the one-time thing, like even a Lum on Groudon or Kyogre can be really huge, just for shrugging off T-Spikes once. Uh, because every turn is crucial, these games are fast-paced, and being able to delay that... Uh, uh, that uh, being put on the clock like that can be really detrimental to a lot of teams plans to dance around you It's like oh well now they can't sub protect stall you until you go down now They have to deal with you directly and of course shrugging off dark is wonderful as well uh, Yeah, that's that is a uh, Garchomp. It's wonderful. Oh, I forgot to mention scarf dark has the awesome trait of outrunning even Kingdra in rain and of course Kabutops in rain so, and uh, late game Scarf Darkrai also outruns Scarf Chomp, of course, and uh, runs Ice Beam for that sometimes, uh, which also helps it check plus two Rock Polish Groudon, because, yeah, it does that, because uh, Rock Polish Groudon doesn't run enough speed to outrun it at plus two. So, yeah, Scarf Darkrai is good, and, uh, you know, Garchomp's amazing. Now, Palkia used to be, like, this kind of staple because its quadruple water resistance made it, you know, essential for staving off Kyogre. Uh, but of course, you know, it's affected by hazards, so it gets worn down and whatnot. So the reason I have Palkia still an A+, you know, a lot of people have kind of soured on Palk over the years. Oh, you know, it's affected by hazards, not a great, not a perfect Kyogre check. But I gotta say, yeah, it's not a perfect Kyogre check, but few things are. I mean, even the Lottie twins aren't good by that measure. Palkia still gets it done against Kyogre. And the reason I like Palkia, I don't really love Scarf Palkia. I mean, it's okay, obviously. It's a, it's faster than Scarf Dialga and Kyogre, and it has strong spatial rends. Uh, you know, much stronger than Draco uh, or Dragon Pulse. And it can still run uh, Draco Meteor itself, of course. And uh, it's really cool in that it has that secondary water stab, so it's really nice against uh, uh, on Kyogre teams because that gives you another option to clean stuff up with, like. Uh, other, it's kind of like Garchomp in that it has a secondary stab to really threaten the steals. You know, Rain Hydros on Scarf Polk are really nasty. 
but it's not the scarf that makes me, you know, really terrified of Palkia or uh, want to rank it this highly. It's that it's such an offensive threat in its own right. It's got that Garchomp-esque speed in that it's getting the jump on the 90s so easily, as well as, you know, even Rayquaza. And it has that vicious, vicious stab combination. And uh, the cover, you know, Fire Blast and Thunder, of course, so it's good in any weather, uh, just like Dialga. It can really run whatever. Uh, and... It, the, the, I like Specs Palkia. I think that one's underrated. But really, it's the you know mixed set, or not even mixed. Uh, I mean, it can go mixed with Luster Sorb Outrage to remove Blissey if you want, or you know even Focus Punch if you're crazy. But just that unrestrained coverage on a Pokemon that's that fast is just fantastic. And so you know, Spatial Rend, Hydro, Fire Blast, Thunder, good in any weather. That's a good Scarf set too. Oh, it, it's just uh, it's just brutal. And its item choice makes it even nastier. Lustrous Orb? Oh, man. I mean, you boost uh, your Spatial Rend, and you're really ripping through uh, Dialgas and Giratina Origins and, and uh, Groudons. Uh, but even your Hydro Pump becomes nastier. So, you know, things like Bronzong really don't... And, you know, Jirachi and Rain, where, yeah, okay, they'll take your Fire Blast, but now you just uh, turn the Rain Hydro on them. That's with Luster Storm. You can, it's also a great user of Habenberry because of its huge special defense, so it can turn the tables there. Generally, you like Outrage if you're going with that because you want to be able to actually kill the Lottie Twins in one shot. You know, Spatial Ren comes up just a bit short because the Lottie Twins special defense boost is crazy. But uh, still, it can really just uh, do what it wants. And, and a lot of people think that Palkia, you know, won't Draco Meteor. And because it uses Spatial Rent so often, you know, and that's often true. And that's just what makes its Draco Meteor so devastating. You know, if there's one thing scarier than a Stab Draco Meteor off 150 Special Attack, it's an unexpected Stab Draco Meteor off 150 Special Attack. You know, it's like, oh, my Dialga will take this Palky on just fine. Oh, whoops, a Draco Meteor, never mind. You know, that extra power really pushes Palky over the edge. So, you know, Palky is definitely, I mean, just being able to check Kyogre is so great. But it's that wall breaking it has, which it's almost unmatched in. It's it's like Dialga, but with a useful secondary stab. So, uh, I mean, yeah, it's got its problems, you know, with its typing, you know, affected by uh, T spikes and whatnot. But that goes for a lot of great Pokemon, and it's just such a ridiculous offensive threat with such a an almost peerless move pool. And uh, yeah, it, and uh, we talked about Dialga protect. Uh, using Protect and Pressure Stalling, and Palkia can do that as well. Uh, I've really liked Leftovers on Palkia in general. I used to run this uh, Spatial Rend Rest Talk filler set, you know, Thunder or Roar or something, which let it take on T-Wave Kyogre and just keep chugging. And uh, Lefties makes it hard to deal with because it's not getting worn down. It's obviously, you know, not fearing Toxic or something. Uh, so that was really cool. But there's also Lefty just being good on it in general. Like, even the four attack sets can run Lefties effectively. You know, making yourself out of range of a Garchomp Dragon Claw suddenly. So it has to outrage if it wants to KO you, and that's exploitable, things like that. Uh, Rest Hawk also nice because it's huge special defense, lets it check Darkrai. Uh, it, it can really do it all. It can run Sleep Talk on Scarf if you want. And uh, unlike Dialga, it doesn't uh, fear, I mean, it doesn't resist Dark Pulse, but it also doesn't fear Focus Blast. And it has huge special defense, so. Yeah, Palkia. Oh, yeah, and the, the Protect thing. So ZF came up with this nasty, nasty set. Sub-Protect Spatial Rent Surf, because its stabs are unresisted, because we're not seeing Empoleon or Shedinja in this tier. And, you know, with T-Spikes, it's just vicious. Sub-Protect with pressure and T-Spike support, unbelievably tough to deal with. Especially with uh, less and less Kyogre running Rest. I mean, you have to be careful of something like Manaphy, but you should be careful of that or Rest Kyogre anyway. Or like a uh, Rest Dialga. So, and it's just so, so brutal, and uh, I really like that, and I came up with something inspired by it. Uh, three attacks protect, because sometimes you really want that thunder, and that, you know, special rend, surf, thunder, protect, so same basic idea, thunder guards you against revenge killing, keeps you healthy, and you don't go full on stall mode anymore, but the increased coverage can be really nice, and it can also be something like roar, roar protect, but uh, yeah, so Palkia has, again, a ton of versatility, enormous threat level, Fantastic defensive utility. I mean, his defensive utility is often just being the faster dragon, and that's already great. And it turns that into offensive, uh, an offensive threat. So, yeah, Palkia, I definitely think Palkia, Palkia is clearly the um, 
you know, the most flawed of the A-pluses, but, I mean, it's still an A-plus Pokemon, very firmly in my opinion. I think there is a significant drop-off. Now, when we say drop-off between Palkia and Mewtwo, um, obviously Mewtwo is still a great Pokemon, but I do think that there, the gap between them is significant enough to where Palkia deserves A+. Okay, Mewtwo. Uh, going to the A's now. So, uh, here we have our next cutoff. So, Mewtwo is a great Pokemon, but definitely, it's like Darkrai in that its defensive profile is very limited, doesn't switch into much. Uh, of course, it can switch into quite a bit, because, or, or it can become really tough to take down, rather, when it runs one of its bulky sets with Recover, because it has a huge HP stat, Taunt, Will-O-Wisp, Recover, Filler, you know, Ice Beam, or Light Screen, or Sub, all insanely annoying options, especially with Pressure. Well, uh, incredibly annoying for offensive teams to take down. Uh, but it still doesn't switch into much directly. It's more, it gets in, and then it kind of plants its feet and just doesn't leave. <laughs> so, it's really cool for that purpose. And, uh, yeah, so that's that, that's the standard uh, Taunt Wisp Mewtwo. But its flagship set is, of course, its many offensive variants. I mean, we could be here all day talking about what Mewtwo can do. Because its offensive move pool is nearly unrivaled. You know, Ice Beam, Thunder, Fire Blast, Aura Sphere, uh, you know, can run Calm Mind and Taunt on those sets too. Uh, self Destruct, just in case you thought you could withstand its hits with uh, Kyogre from Full Health, which can take even the Thunder sometimes, but nope, Blissey can't take it on either, although that can also lose to Taunt, Calm Mind stuff. Yeah, uh, it can mix and match to its heart's de delight. It can run Life Orb, it can run Lefties, it can run Expert Belt. You know, probably more, honestly. Lumberry, I think, is underrated on it. Again, removing T-Spikes is huge. Uh, so... Sorry, my microphone cut out for a second there. Uh, so... Yeah, uh, Mewtwo's item can be really, really nice. Uh, Life Orb, Lefties, Expert Belt. I'm sure there's more. Lumberry, I think, is really cool. That temporary T-Spikes, uh, you know, immunity, let's call it, is just such a game-breaker, especially because a lot of people, when dealing with Mewtwo, will be like, all right, switch around until the T-Spikes puts it in Giratina's Shadow Sneak range. That's really common, so... It can be, uh, and just, like, being able to shrug off, like, Paralysis from a defensive Jirachi or a Toxic from Bronzong can be really big. So, Mewtwo does it all, and its speed is enormous, because we already talked about, you know, Garchomp's speed, or Palkia's speed is huge, then Garchomp's speed is huge because it's faster, then the Lottie twins are faster, then Darkrai's faster than them, and Mewtwo's faster than Darkrai. It is the fastest unboosted Pokemon you will see outside of the lead slot, because Deoxys attack isn't really common outside the lead slot. Uh, Deoxys attack is like a much frailer Mewtwo. Uh, they have, you know, their pros and cons, but Mewtwo is generally preferred. So... Uh, yeah, Mewtwo will, you will only revenge Mewtwo, uh, you know, you'll only outspeed Mewtwo through Priority or Scarf, both of which are exploitable and easier to switch around, so that's why Mewtwo, uh, it, it's great on those super offensive teams because it's, uh, you know, when the, the revenge killing methods are Priority or uh, Scarf, then those are more exploitable by Mewtwo's follow-up teammate or a switch-in potentially. But yeah, in those games where it's just, you know, I'm going to constantly outspeed you, then, you know, having a Mewtwo on your side is great, especially because it has such great super effective coverage, rain or shine, and it's so fast and so strong. And, uh, yeah, I mean, sometimes its power does come up barely short. I mean, the most frustrating thing in the world is not KOing Giratina Origin with uh, Life Orb Ice Beam after rocks. But that's why uh, take, making Giratina Origin take two rounds of rocks is often something you do with uh, on a Mewtwo team before sending it in. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's something... It, Mewtwo is definitely down here a little because... I mean, it's still a great Pokemon, of course, but it's down here a little because y you need to be surprisingly conscientious when using it. Otherwise, you might just kind of come up short, like with that Giratina O example. Uh, and, you know, it... Yeah, it sometimes can come up short with even like Thunders on Kyogre and Groudon. You definitely need to pick your spot with it. It's not an, it doesn't run stab, so it, it doesn't, uh, it's not as much of an Oko machine, despite how many things it's hitting super effectively. So you gotta be careful there. But, you know, uh, on super offensive teams, especially with spikes, it just, 
you know, and getting the chip on uh, Giratina O, then it can be uh, a game breaker, of course. Just not a lot of defensive utility when it's going all out offensive. Uh, but on those like semi stallish spiking teams, and Taunt Wisp Mewtwo is the biggest pain. As long as you don't lose to Heatran, then it is unbelievably stupid to deal with. Uh, so, e like, uh, even the Scarfers struggle to take it down. The few faster things, and, you know, everything slower gets wisped. So, and of course, great with T-Spikes, because you still wisp the steals. And T-Spikes make it easier to immediately start, you know, light screening or subbing or whatever. So, yeah, Mewtwo, great Pokemon. Jirachi. Uh, Jirachi is either Scarf, very commonly, because, you know, good speed tier, Palkia speed tier, and the Dragon Resistance, you know, outruns, uh, and, uh has the e-speed resistance to check Lucario and Rayquaza, but its more common set is the special defense variant because uh, that lets it actually switch into things like Latios and you know, other Draco Meteors. And from there, it's a great Pokemon because it sets up rocks, it can spread paralysis, or it can just U-turn. You know, Jirachi's problem is that it kind of gives free switches to a lot of nasty things, but if you have rocks elsewhere and you can just use that I mean, Scarf Jirachi also U-turns, but it doesn't switch. It takes over 50 from Latio Draco Meteor, so... Uh, when you use uh, Special Offense to Jirachi and just immediately U-turn, you get the best of both worlds. You can switch into that Latio Draco Meteor and you immediately U-turn on the Groudon and bring in your Mewtwo or something. U-turn is a great way to uh, get Mewtwo, or, or, you know, things like Darkrai in. The, the things that don't really switch in on much, if you can bring them in off a of U-turn, that's wonderful, so... Mewtwo is best pals with Jirachi, especially because uh, offensive Mewtwo is threatened out by all the Scarf Dracos, and Jirachi is a great switch into those. So, uh, yeah. That's... Oh, I, I also want to mention that uh, you got to watch out with Mewtwo's Ice Beams against uh, so the Soul Dew Twins, uh, in addition to Giratina O. you got to make sure that they're in range before you just go for it and come up short. So, Mewtwo is best against a weakened team. Anyway, back to Jirachi. Yeah, uh, Jirachi is pretty simple, honestly. You know, Scarf, pretty decent, but... Uh, generally, special events preferred, you know, rocks, T Waver, Body Slam. If you want to paralyze Groudons and uh, or like Taunt Mew two, Taunt Mew two, uh, not Mew. Uh, that that was my reasoning for liking Body Slam Jirachi recently. You know, uh, the guaranteed paralysis of T Wave is generally nice, and you know, being able to threaten to T Wave Giratina O is nice as well. But you know, if Groudon is a big deal, I mean, usually it's not. It's usually the Taunt Mew two thing, but. Uh, it can usually be a same difference kind of thing. So if you want the security against Taunt Mewtwo, which many offensive teams do, then you can do that. And yeah, it can wi wish. It can mix and match these moves nicely. It can uh, it has wish support obviously on the special defense set. You know, in a, in a tier where you really have to be healthy to take hits, being able to restore a teammate's health can really go a long way. So Drudge is a great support Pokemon and fits even on more offensive teams because. Even though it's defensive and not much of a threat, it's U-Turn and Wish and T-Wave and Rocks are all great support that these teams like, in addition to the backbone. Because if you just go pure offense, then it is, you are going to start losing things as soon as the Scarf Draco Meteor comes in. And, you know, not that that's necessarily a bad thing. You know, if you can punish that with a Rock Polish Groudon or something, great. But you have to have a plan for it. And not every team is like that, so a lot of them like Jirachi. All right, T-Tar. T-Tar is still great in Ubers, even with Kyogre and Groudon running around. Its most common variant is something in the lead slot, because with Sandstorm, that it doesn't care for any Focus Sashes, so it brings down the Deoxys Twins' uh, speed and attack, and uh, also ruins uh, Frostlass. So, and it can also uh, get up rocks, and it's surprisingly annoying to switch into, because Groudon switching in just boosts the power of its Fire Blast, you know, it's got low kick or super power for Dialga. You know, Crunch hits Kyogre pretty hard because Kyogre uh, often doesn't invest in its defense. And uh, yeah, it can run a Sash set that ensures it gets a Brox against leads. It's not usually beating like uh, Rayquaza. It can run Lumberry to handle Darkrai because it can live a Focus Blast. You know, get a. Oh, that's another thing. Super power also threatens the hell out of Darkrai. And. Uh, you can run Chopple if you really want to take its Focus Blast, because a lot of Rise will Focus Blast instead of... Uh, well, actually, no, most Rise will switch, because they don't want to you know, play those guessing games against Tar. But it can be tough to switch around T-Tar, so sometimes they have no choice. So both Lum and Chopple are good, uh, especially because you know, mostly Dark Rye are Scarf, so they have to lock into something. So 
Uh, yeah, those are solid options. Custap has seen sparing use. So yeah, that, that's the mid game or the lead tar. You know, either sash. I mean, all out attacking is fun because it can be kind of dumb to choose between you know attacking and um, uh, attacking and not getting rocks or getting rocks and having to deal with a full health Rayquaza, for example. Because airlock means it's not losing its sash to sand. Uh, so if you can, you know, afford rock somewhere else on a Sash Tar team, that's generally preferred. But it's also a great bulky rocker. It's also a, an underrated poke on uh, defensive teams because the Sandstream chip is really nice. Uh, and, you know, that uh, it's got that great special defense boost so it can switch into Lotties to decent Giratina switch. And, you know, Sponging Draco Meteors, it's generally pretty good at that. So it's a good bulky. It can run leftovers, of course, although it's rare, just for the longevity. So yeah, great bulky rocker for more spiking teams. You know, pairs as well with Skarmory as anywhere. Uh, so, excuse me, I had to stretch from how amazing Titar is. Uh, that's just as a lead, of course. It can fit on all kinds of teams. You know, bulky offense to more semi staller stuff uh, with those rocks. And Scarf Tar is still great in Ubers. I have been a longtime Scarf Tar fan because it has that fast pursuit that makes it excellent at removing the Lottie Twins and Giratina, and just that speed in general is nice to handle annoying things like Dialga, you know, an SD Garchomp, because they don't run Yachi, uh, or, you know, a Palkia, just having that fast crunch or uh, Stone Edge. Well, I usually prefer Ice Punch to actually hit a Garchomp. Uh, so sometimes you want Stone Edge, usually I think you get by without it. Uh, if ho -Oh was more popular, well, ho -Oh outside the lead slot anyway, then you would definitely consider Stone Edge, but yeah. So yeah, Scarf Tar is cool. Some people have liked Dragon Dance T-Tar. I've never really been a fan. I, I don't really think it's very good, but some people like it. But yeah, T-Tar's claim to fame is uh, lead slot, or you know, bulky Stealth Rocker, or... Uh, oh, Choice, Choice Band is also quite good. Choice Band is really hard to switch into. You have that great bulk for the Lottie Twins, and it's great at ruining Lugia. Uh, yeah, Lugia really does not want a piece of it. I mean, even, even Reflect Lugia is, you know, you have to, if you force Lugia to s roost on the switch, then you just crunch as it tries to reflect, and then it's in a bad spot. It's not healing with lefties, you know. Disrupting lefties for a lot of pokes is really nice. Uh, also fun with uh, uh, CB, or even Scarf Tar, is when you switch into a choice Kyogre's Ice Beam and then you pursue it. That's always fun. So, yeah, T-Tar is very, it's not as, I mean, these Pokemon, the A Pokemon, are not as slappable on teams as the above, but they still have a lot, of, they have, they're still great Pokemon, they fit on a ton of teams, and they are consistent performers. You just need to be a little more aware of how you're slapping them on. Uh, but, yeah, T-Tar, great Pokemon, and uh, like with Kyogre and Groudon, you don't have to just pick one weather, because it's not like uh, you have an extra drill to support or something. No, you can, T-Tar regularly features alongside uh, Groudon or Kyogre, rarely even both. So, on uh, more offensive and, you know, bulky spiking teams alike. So, uh, yeah, Sash Tar gets offensive teams off to a great start, you know, bulky Rockstar gets, you know, uh, both bulkier offense and semi-stally things off to a great start. Scarf is a great mid-game Pokemon, CB2, and, uh, yeah, and I guess there's also the curse we mentioned of Dragon Dance, but... Yeah, so that's T-Tar, great poke. Rayquaza, great lead. It's got that nice priority so that it finishes off the Deoxys twins, limiting them to one layer. Uh, really strong, really fast. Getting the jump on the... It's a dragon that gets the... It's the first dragon that gets the jump on the base 90s. So that's already great, you know, being able to outrun uh, Dialga and Kyogre and Groudon and Garatina Origin is wonderful. As that same huge 150 base special attack for its Draco Meteors. Uh, it's got a nasty 150 attack outrage as well. So, whereas something like Dialga is not as threatening once it's at minus two, because its attack isn't as high. Same with uh, Palkia. I mean, they still have high attack stats. 120 is nothing to sneeze at, but 150 is huge. So, Ray can do that, and has the great priority of E-Speed. So it's a great Sash lead. Uh, theoretically, I guess you could use Lum if you're not feeling like you're in danger of a lot of... Because uh, a lot of lead T-Tars don't run Stone Edge. So, uh, I mean, with the popularity of lead Kyogre, maybe it's not the smartest thing. But 
Uh, yeah, so lead ray is good. Mid game mix ray, it, it's tough. Again, it's tough to switch in. So you really like the U turn from Jirachi or like Scizor. But once it's in, it's a monster because it, it, uh, you can't revenge it with the base 90s as easily. Uh, you know, it's harder to sponge with Dialga because it's got both Brick Break and the 150 attack outrage, especially with Life Orb. Incredibly tough to switch into. Think like Mix Dragonite and Gen 4 OU, or if you were around for Salamence, then think of that. And uh, just pump it up to like 15 on a scale of 1 to 10. So it's, it's crazy. And uh, that speed, that power, that move pool, it's pretty simple. Uh, it's hard to set Ray up for an SD or DD sweep. It pretty much needs Wobbuffet, or else it's never going to get an opportunity. But once Wobbuffet encores something and Ray gets a boost, then you know, look out. Especially DD because it gets the jump on Scarf Dialga, and uh, you know that E speed resist won't do it any good anymore. So uh, SD, of course, is a vicious Lucario S cleaner. Uh, Ray's also very cool because it doesn't get affected by sand, despite not being you know rock, steel, or ground, which is very cool. So yeah, Ray is, uh, oh, CB Ray is actually kind of underrated too, that E-Speed really packs a punch, and you can fire off really strong Dragon Claws early on, weaken things, and, you know, if you really just need to go one for one with something, then that CB Outrage is pretty much unmatched. So, uh, yeah, great, great Pokemon. Uh, tough to get in, but definitely worth the effort. So, and of course, one of the best leads as well. So, uh, threatens pretty much everything. Alright, so uh, Rayquaza-esque lead is Deoxys Attack in that it uses a strong priority E-Speed to seal the deal, uh, but it also can run spikes. Rock's DOA is generally not a great idea because, I mean, it's not unviable or anything, but it's really, nine times out of ten, you don't want it. Maybe even more. Because you don't want to have that choice of, you know, do I want to attack this or, and not have Ra and not have uh, my rocks, or... And do I want rocks into B5, 6 down? I mean, you can go without uh, Alaris spikes. I mean, DOA features on uh, heavy offensive teams that like spikes but don't need them if they're doing damage instead. So you can make that choice, but you don't want to make that same choice with rocks, which are essential. So, uh, great lead. Pretty simple, really. That's uh, it, it runs Psycho Boost more and more to try and ruin Lum Tentacruels, but we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, so it's pretty simple. Superpower, you know, E-Speed, Thunder, Grass Knot, Shadow Ball, uh, Ice Beam, Fire Punch or HP Fire. Yeah, that, it, and uh, of course Spikes, so mix and match from that. Pick, uh, you know, pick your favorite, depending on your team. So yeah, DOA is simple. And uh, mid-game DOA, I think, is underrated. We did uh, see it in, if you watch my six tournament battles video from DBV Ubers, then you saw a Life Orb DOA in the Colt 49 versus M Dragon game. And it's really threatening. I mean, it's a lot more vulnerable to priority than Mewtwo is, because it dies to all of it immediately, as opposed to just once it's dipped to a certain health level like Mewtwo. But it's really strong, uh, and it's got a comparable offensive move pool. So, uh, yeah, underrated poke. DOA is good in general. So, Tentacruel exists as a lead. Even though the Tentacruel lead is no longer surprising and has become standard, it's still really great because T-Spikes are really good. Just needs to be, uh, you, if you're aware of the existence of other tentacruels in your, you know, team building, and don't just count on not seeing it, and count on, as long as you don't count on T-Spikes doing all the work for you, as long as you still have a cohesive offensive attack without them, then you're fine. Tentacruel is still a great lead, uh, with its speed and icy wind, then, and bulk, then it can uh, handle Rayquaza leads really nicely. In fact, I think uh, Rayquaza leads should consider Earthquake just for Tentacruel, uh, instead of the more standard Brick Break. Uh, since any T-Tar that stays in is going to be Sash anyway. Oh, that's the other reason for Chopel on lead Tar. Uh, Brick Break Rayquaza. Uh, yeah, so there's that. And there's also uh, the fact that Lum Tentacruel is great against Dark Rai leads. Uh, and, you know, getting up T-Spikes on those is just wonderful. Uh, the standard used to be Sash, but then people figured, you know, not a lot really threatens Tentacruel, so you can get away with running Lum. And, in fact, that led to a lot of uh, Deoxys speed and attack running Psycho Boost. Uh, just, it, pretty much just for Tentacruel. I mean, the stab is nice in general, but yeah, you generally, you do really like that. Uh, and Tentacruel, you know, responded by running a lot of bulk. Just to, to take on Rayquaza's Draco into E-Speed combo, but uh, also for Deoxys speed's uh, Psycho Boost, because those aren't as strong. So, yeah, Lum Tentacruel... Uh, a uh, new age, a very defining new age lead. It's easily the most significant addition to the lead metagame of the last, let's say, seven-ish years. But really only took off once the metagame started being played more commonly. So, 
yeah, great poke. And uh, it's pretty simple. Set up T-Spikes and abuse it with your Protect Kyogres and your, you know, sub-Protect Dialgas and Palkias and, you know, fun stuff like Ludicolo. Yeah, T-Spikes are great, uh, as we've already established. Pretty simple. Oh, and uh, it, of course, sets up T-Spikes and threatens a spin on uh, Deoxys speed, you know, without Psycho Boost, of course. Uh, so that's really nice. It has Icy Wind to slow Deoxys speed down. Uh, lately, I've been kind of wondering if Icy Wind is really necessary, since, uh, it, I don't know if it's really necessary as, uh, you don't really make use of the speed drop against Dio speed anymore, and a lot of Tentacruels will just try to flail haplessly against a Giratina Origin trying to spin block them, and Ice Beam might be better for that purpose. You know, marginally, but still better. So, yeah, Icy Wind is the standard, but uh, I think uh, Ice Beam might be better. Who knows? It would have to be tried. But yeah, that's uh, Tentacruel for you. It's fast. It, it's surprisingly adept at, you know, sponging things later in the game. Like, if it's at high health, you can use it as a Draco Meteor Sponge uh, for, like, a Scarf Dialga or something. And then you just switch out on the minus two Dialga later. I mean, it's not like you're going to be checking the Dialga at all. No, not at all. But... You sponge the Draco, and then you switch out to something else on the minus two Draco. And thus, you still have a sacrifice for later, and you have avoided Dialga claiming something. So, uh, yeah, that special defense, especially when invested in as it is for Rayquaza, Draco Meteor, and Dio by a Psycho Boost, can be really, really nice. And, uh, yeah, spin is cool when you can pull it off. And uh, set, set up your T-Spikes, keep your opponent's hazards off, ideally. And, uh, you know, go one-on-one -on -one with most leads, and you're good to go. So, yeah, that's Tentacruel for you. Lucario, Vicious Sweeper, Close Combat, Life Orb Close Combat is like this, the only move in the tier that really scares Dialga regularly, because even Groudon and Garchomp Earthquake don't always threaten it, but Life Orb CC rips through it, Crunch uh, means Giratina O is not happy, and the you know few faster Pokemon, your Dark Rise and Mewtwo's, and your Scarfers like Kyogre, and uh, Palkia, and even Garchomp after... Uh, uh, some chip damage, even though it is more physically bulky, then they are not liking a boosted E-Speed. And what makes it even easier is that, unlike something like Rayquaza, Lucario's typing means that it sets up E-Speed really e or sets up E-Speed, sets up Swords Dance really easily, because if as soon as you Draco Meteor and go down to minus two, Lucario has a free dance. And it's really tough to deal with it from there, especially with Spikes up. So, you know, putting things like Groudon into close combat range. So yeah, Lucario is simple, it only ever SDs, and the real choice is between Adamant or Jolly. Uh, so, I mean, again, that whole base 90 war. Uh, so, yeah, Luke is really, really vicious. Uh, I think I really, really like Spikes. Uh, Spikes as Lucario can work, but I, I generally don't like it as much, nearly as much. So, but that's hard, that's uh, far from a, you know, unreasonable requirement given the nature of offense in this tier. So, yeah, Lucario is simple, but it just rips through things really nicely. And, I mean, now we're getting to Pokemon that are more one-note, as you see here in A-, you're not seeing nearly as much variety in sets as, like, even the Pokes in A, uh, which were more, you know, uh, clearly defined as opposed to being able to fluidly switch between sets. I mean, they, these still these Pokemon can still go with more things, but, you know, all the A- Pokes you see here, they really have one thing they do for the most part. I mean, and adaptations they make are really small, so... Uh, yeah, like, Tentacruel, Lum versus Sash, you know, Icy Wind versus Ice Beam, you know, Bulk, Speed Investment, that kind of thing. Uh, like, because uh, Tentacruel's uh, base 100 speed is really, really nice, uh, for sure. You know, getting the jump on the base 90 so easily is why it's so cool. Uh, and if you are going to run Icy Wind, then I think you could even underspeed lead Rayquaza, because you're just going to... Well, I guess you want to T-Spike first and then Icy Wind, just as, in case of a crit, but... Yeah, so you go down to 319, and then you have a ton of bulk to play with. So, uh, but yeah, it's still a lot of... Generally, one, like, yeah, Deoxys A can go mid-game attacker, but it, for the most part, it's a Sash thing. For the most part, Tentacruel, just T-Spike lead, and it's the, it's the minor stuff you're choosing, like the moves on that set, as opposed to all the pokes above it, which, you know, with the exception of maybe DOS. But uh, the other pokes are really cycling between different sets entirely, whereas these pokes are really just cycling through you know, small variations on the same set. So yeah, that's Luke for you. Uh, Bronzong, same thing. I mean, bulky, great Draco Meteor Sponge, because it's immune to spikes, and unlike Skarmory, it doesn't fear thunder. 
uh, yeah, great, great typing, especially in rain. You will pretty much always see Bronzong on rain, so it can switch into things like Latios and Giratina Origin that pack HP fire. Uh, yeah, great, uh, very annoying with Toxic, really annoying with Protect and Toxic, actually. Can run things like Rocks, Toxic, Protect, EQ pretty easily. It can mix up its moveset. Can run things like Boom. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's great support poke. I mean, you don't want to be trying to solo entire teams with it, but it can be incredibly annoying to switch into when Kyogre gets toxic. Really nice along T-Spikes, actually. We saw a lot of Tentacruel Bronzong teams uh, recently, uh, because you T-Spike and then you get the rocks, and you have a great defensive poke to make up for the, uh, you know, the rather suicidal nature of the Tentacruel leads, because they will sacrifice themselves for the T-Spikes, and then it's okay because you have the Bronzong, which brings you... Uh, such a solid defensive Pokemon, and of course Tentacruel still sticks around, that's what's so cool about it. Uh, it's not like you just let it get KO'd, you bring it back later, and it will still be useful. And uh, yeah, so Bronzong picks up the slack there. But Zong is great even on non-Tentacruel teams, just fits on... That Draco Meteor Sponge is so valuable, and you know, gets up rocks, and it's kind of like Jirachi, but instead of using those free turns to... Uh, to U-turn, then you just do it to start spreading Toxics on everything in sight. So... Yeah, that's Zong. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, used on rain. Speaking of only used on weather, then we have Heatran, who's only used on sun. Uh, Heatran can technically run Scarf. It's been experimented with, but not really. Heatran's flagship set is the Leftovers bulky slash fast set. So, uh, you know, Lava, Taunt, Roar, Dragon Pulse is the most classic one. Really just devastating with hazards, but it can run a lot of stuff. It can run Toxic, it can run Protect, it can run uh, Stealth Rock. And Heatran's thing is that it is the only Pokemon that resists the Dragon Fire combination, which is really huge. It has that huge special defense so it can w absorb Draco Meteors, and completely unafraid of the Fire Blast, the Sunny Fire Blast at that, that will go with it. So that makes it a huge defensive piece for a lot of uh, semi-stallish Sun stuff. Uh, you know, being able to handle things like uh, Dialga, and uh, a lot of Dialga sets, obviously you have to watch it for Brick Break. Uh, good for against Palkia and Sun. Great against Latios. Really great against Latios, in fact. Because even Rain Latios doesn't always run Surf. I mean, you don't love taking those 100% accurate Thunders, obviously. But, you know, being able to switch into Draco like that without instant fear of death from another move is just wonderful. And then you just uh, status and phase the bejesus out of the other team. So, uh, yeah, Heatran's pretty simple. You know, you want Hazards with it, you want Sun, and then you just switch it into the, all the... Well... Heatran's great because there's a lot of dragons in the tier, and then there are steels in order to withstand the dragons in the tier, and Heatran devours both of them. So, that's the simplified version, but yeah, that's Heatran for you. Kabutops, another rain-specific poke, or a weather-specific poke, rather. This one goes on rain. It's a great offensive threat because it clean, it, you know, Scarfers, besides Mewtwo, oh, Scarf Mewtwo also technically exists to outrun Swift Swimmers and still have Explosion, unlike, or, well, Self-Destruct, unlike Darkrai. Uh, so, and it's naturally stronger, too. Uh, yeah, so Kabutops is uh, the preferred Swift Swimmer because it is stronger. Uh, well, it has lower base power moves, uh, with Waterfall being weaker than Hydro Pump, but it's effectively stronger because it has Stone Edge for Kyogre, uh, as opposed to Draco Meteor, you hit on its weaker defense stat. It has Super Power f or Low Kick for Dialga. Just a vicious, vicious Pokemon. And it can, of course, spin. The real choice Kabutops has to make is Life Orb or Choice Band. I really like Choice Band. I think that those huge power waterfalls and stone edges are game breaking. And uh, not getting recoiled down makes it easier to deal with as well. You know, you don't get put into Giratina O Shadow Sneak range. Obviously more prediction reliant, but the extra power is huge in those uh, those games where you really need to get as much KO power as possible. So uh, that's Kabutops. And uh, now we're gonna go faster through the remaining pokes because they are more simple. Uh, we have Skarm, which is like Bronzong, except it spikes, and it is afraid of Thunder, so that's why it's harder to slap on teams. And uh, it's it's a good check to most Groudon, but you gotta be wary of those fire moves, which is you know why Skarmory is always always wary. Uh, you know, it's a lot warier than Zong, because you want it to stick around forever, but it's not always gonna get opportunities. But of course, when Skarm hits, it hits, and it spikes and roosts and phases everything. And uh, in a lot of games, even the games where it's not really getting much opportunity, then you can still grab a spike, and that'll be enough to facilitate your other guys. So, 
Skarmory is very useful, but it's harder to fit on teams. Generally, the bulky stuff, really great with T-Tar, of course, but great on Rain and Sun as well. So, and uh, Special Defense Investment makes it nice at Sponging Dracos, and it can actually roost them off. Instant recovery on a steel, uh, a steel that actually resists Draco is really, really nice. Oh, and uh, it's Stuff Scarchomp, which is wonderful. Uh, Fori, Fori is not really something you should rely on to spin. It's more of a hazard machine, and unlike Skarm, it also gets T-Spikes. So you get your spikes, which are great against everything, and then, then you get your T-Spikes to really seal the deal. And uh, what's cool about it is that you can already see if they have a Tentacruel or not by the time you send Fori in. Send, and you can still be useful even if they do. So you can spike, and as opposed to just like flailing helplessly without and not getting anything done if you only have T-Spikes. So that's cool. If you can spin with Payback, or like if you have like Scarf Tar supporting it, then that's fine. Then you can semi-reliably spin. But again, uh, like with Skarm, then you really have a problem with all the dra a lot of dragons being unchoiced, and therefore you're constantly fearing you know fire blasts. So that really holds Fori back. But still a decent enough poke for to be uh, high enough on this ranking. I think it fits with these other Pokemon well. B plus, uh, Scizor, either a Choice Band set or a Lefties set. Uh, I really like Lefties, actually, because you really, with bulk investment, that you really leverage your uh, ability to sponge Dracos, and you have U-Turn and Priority Bullet Punch. So, you team up with things like Giratina Origin, you have that double priority attack, and you finish off pretty much everything weakened. Uh, it's a really nice kind of fail-safe uh, against the varied offensive attack this team can provide, or this tier can provide. And uh, you can even pursue things fairly decently. It's not the most reliable Lottie Pursuiter, but it can get the job done. Uh, you got to be careful with it, of course. Uh, makes for a great pairing with Wob, incidentally. Uh, so yeah, ban even Band runs a lot of special defense investment, or else you're just going to crumble all the dragon moves. But yeah, uh, good poke. Harder to fit on teams. But uh, it, it still definitely has its place. I definitely prefer the lefties sets. You know, BP, U-Turn, Pursuit, Roost is really nice. It can, you know, feasibly mess around with things like Superpower, Sleep Talk, Knock Off. But uh, the core of it is BP and U-Turn. I can feasibly go with that Pursuit, even though most of the time I wouldn't. Uh, unless you're running Sleep Talk, in which case you want all your moves to hit Darkrai. So U-Turn, BP, Superpower, Roost, uh, Sleep Talk is my preferred set on that. Uh, yeah, Sleep Talk on Lefty Set is much nicer because you take a lot less damage effectively from Darkrai's Bad Dreams as opposed to a Scarfer trying to Sleep Talk. Uh, Ho-Oh. Ho-Oh mid-game is the nastiest thing ever if you can spin, but you usually can't. And, uh, you know, with the prominence of Roar on Dialga, then you can't just say, oh, I'll get it in before it rocks go up. So, generally Ho-Oh is best... It always still really scary though, as a lead, because then you force the opponent to deal, to deal with you directly. Uh, it is great because, I mean, it beats things like T-Tar because T-Tar Lee doesn't run rock move, <laughs> uh, rock moves. Uh, it's Sacred Fire burns uh, and limits things like Frostlass and the Dio Twins to one layer. It uh, is, it's great against Darkrai, that's what I was looking for. Well, it, uh, you know, EQs the hell out of Ho-Oh and, you know, doesn't really... I actually don't know what the calc on Hydro is, but Ho is such massive special defense and, you know, invests a lot in bulk, and Tentacruel doesn't exactly invest in special attack, so I would not be surprised at all if it didn't get to a KO'd. Uh, but yeah, you still EQ it because ho -Oh wants to, because Tenon wants to be T-spiking it. Uh, with Lum, you just destroy Darkrai, completely ruin it. Some people actually will run Charcoal or Choice Band to make sure that bulky DOS gets uh, brought down to Sacred Fire Burn range. Since no one in their right mind is going to Dark Void a ho -Oh with uh, Dark Rye. Anyway, uh, yeah, credits to Jirachi for coming up with Lum ho -Oh lead. That was a real game changer for the lead metagame. But again, that's its own video. So, yeah, ho -Oh rips through things from the lead slot. Uh, really, really surprisingly reliably, because it handles all the Sash stuff nicely. Since Sacred Fire is kind of like T-Tar Sandstorm, you know, the Sash bypassing tool. And uh, with Roost, it's really tough to deal with because you can Roost off Draco Meteors really nicely. I mean, again, check out the uh, game in the six tournament battles on DPP Whoopers I did where it just shrugs off Latios with ease. So you can do things like uh, even go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rayquaza lead really nicely. So Ho is a great, great matchup lead spread. It's uh, Oh, it dominates Giratina Origin lead too. Easily. Really, really easily. It's so hard to switch into. It's hard for a lot of teams to really chase out, too. 
Um, yeah, it's hard for Kyogre to switch in on because Braybird hits it so hard, it doesn't like a burn anyway. Uh, the, the influx of Lum lead Kyogre does really hurt Ho-Oh, but that's really its only flaw. And Le Lum lead Kyogre is a free invitation for Dialga to get rocks up, so uh, there you go. So yeah, we've seen some really cool stuff with Ho-Oh. It's really best as a lead. I mean, I, I have really, uh, me and a couple other guys like Iris really tried to make mid-game Ho-Oh work, and it, if it can work, it's so nice. It's, you know, sub -roof sets, light screen sets, they're so dumb to deal with. I uh, messed around with Protect, actually. I really like that one. But its uh, main strength is as a lead, and it is a great, great lead, so that's ho -Oh. Wob. Simple. Remove Scarf Pokemon, make your late game pokes really scary. Remove Defensive Pokemon, because you switch it on something like a Fory Rapid Spin, or a Blissey, or a Lugia. You Encore them, and they are ruined. You tickle them, and you pursue them with Scizor or T-Tar. That's really fun. You uh, safeguard, and your setup Groudon isn't affected by um, uh, T-Spikes. Uh, it can really do it all. You have Custab Destiny Bond, if you like that. But even just encoring into Counter, Mirror Coat, you know, you can even ru ruin support Dialga that way. Oh, it's just such a great Pokemon. Uh, so, it's harder to fit, because its defensive utility is kind of weird. It doesn't really switch in it. But uh, in-game, that it's just such a brutal Pokemon. And uh, check out Solwyn's, uh, the last game from the six tournament battles video I did, link in the description, for full, to get the full picture of how Wob functions. I mean, you're kind of not having a, you're not having a lot of defensive, a true defensive synergy uh, if you're running Wob because it doesn't really truly counter much, but you make up for it because it, it literally forces KOs. So, uh, that, talk about a one-for-one one or even a two-for-one machine, dependingly. Uh, and just being able to force a one-on-one -on -one as well as it does is really, really amazing for a lot of offensive teams. So, Wob is really unique and really cool. Uh, it's in B-plus because, again, more specialized, harder to fit, but still a great, great Pokemon. Lugia, Defensive Titan. It's Lugia really struggles with the influx of defensive Dialga because they are not afraid of Lugia's T-Wave or Toxic or anything, and uh, they roar it out. That's the big thing. If it didn't run roar so often, then Sub Roost Lugia would be the biggest pain. Like Sub Roost Whirlwind Ice Beam is a devastating set for a lot of teams because uh, your Lugia is so fast. It's as fast as the Lottie Twins. And a great Garchomp counter, great Groudon counter, and it phases around with hazard damage. If you have a lot of hazards up and Lugia gets into a groove with Whirlwind, yes, it can be incredibly annoying. Uh, because, But you really need those hazards for uh, Kyogre. And all the thunders in the tier really hurt it. All the, you know, the um, from the Lottie Twins, and the Dialgas, and the Mewtwo's, and, uh, and, and Darkrai being really common hurts it as well. So, uh, that said, Lugia is still incredibly bulky on the special side, and has pressure and roost, and can be unbelievably annoying. It just really doesn't like its stealth rock weakness, and uh, its fear of paralysis, which is everywhere because of all those thunders, and, uh, you know, toxic as well, doesn't, doesn't help it as well. But, uh, and, you know, it just kind of thuds even to, into a lot of offensive teams because of how common defensive Dialga is. So... That's the big thing. But if you really get into a groove with uh, Lugia with some hazard support, especially Spikes and T-Spikes, you know, that, that's a team worth using Fortress for. Spikes and T-Spikes, if you can spin, fine. But just getting both those hazards, or, you know, Tanacruel plus Skarmory, that's also fine. And then Lugia becomes an absolute nightmare for more offensive teams that just can't break it. Uh, and even against defensive teams, you know, with pressure, sub-roost, it can be really annoying. So, uh, Lugia is definitely a potential huge threat. You just have to really be very, very conscientious of it uh, to get the most out of it, or else it definitely will flub. But definitely one of the highest ceilings in the tier, just in terms of being, you know, absolutely unbreakable. Uh, and you just have to really help it put its threats on a timer. Uh, if you can do that, then yes, it's biggest pain. You, one of the biggest pains you can face. Uh, just hard to do that consistently, and it doesn't fit on many teams, so that's it. I, I do think it's better than a lot of people are giving, giving it credit for. I have seen the devastation it can cause too many times to ever disregard it. Uh, it's undeniably in kind of a rough place, but it's just, uh, it, it is just waiting to be, I mean, uh, nothing scarier than a Lugia that is unexpected, because... Uh, a lot of teams check it naturally, but when teams start kind of like cheating on their Lugia coverage, it's not like something 
like Ho-Oh, where you can say, yeah, okay, I don't have to explicitly go out of my way to put rock moves on things because I'm going to deal with Ho just by overpowering it. Uh, you know, because Lugia is just a, you know, few weakened pokes away, like a few weakened Di lefties Dialgas away from really just taking over games. And, uh, oh, uh, actually, no, sorry, sorry, with the Subroost set I mentioned, that's what people should be using, Subroost Ice Beam Whirlwind. The set I was thinking of that gets completely blanked by Dialga is Subroost Toxic Ice Beam. That one is ruined by it. But when you use a Subroost Ice Beam Whirlwind, then you beat Dialga to the roar. The problem is still, you know, subbing and uh, roosting and getting roared out on those because you can't sub forever and uh, you don't want to, you know, get thundered if you can help it just because that paralysis rate. But if you can get into a groove, you know, maybe you pr paralyze Dialga with your own thunder uh, from your own Dialga. So, and then you can outspeed with Whirlwind. That's the general idea. That's what I think people should use. And you force damage uh, a lot more easily that way. And you actually still uh, can do something to Lucario that way. So I think that's the set people should be using with Lugia, not Subroost Ice Beam Toxic. So, uh, yeah, the defensive sub with, Re with Reflect is cool and all, but I think you gotta force damage uh, more readily. And theoretically, Toxic Ice Beam Roost Whirlwind is still better. Uh, I don't think it needs Reflect or T-Wave, uh, which was the old... I think, the, yeah, that was the old standard Lugia. Reflect, T-Wave, Roost Ice Beam. I think uh, it's you got to be all about the passive damage as immediately as possible. No sitting on your, uh, no sitting down with reflect and trying to sit on everything with reflect and T wave. It just doesn't work like that. Uh, so as soon as if you're more aggressive with Lugia, it will work a lot better. Uh, just give it some spikes for the love of God. Like give it some spikes, and uh, if you can give it T spikes and let it sub instead of toxic, that's wonderful too. All right, Giratina altered. Yeah, the old rest talk roar Willowisp set. I think it's not bad, but it is, it's like Lugia, except even harder to fit. Uh, with special events, it is a surprisingly decent Kyogre check. I mean, it's not great, but you can definitely sponge some hits with it. It's really hard to bring down. It spreads passive damage nicely. The cool stuff with uh, Giratina Altered is its sub-protect stuff, because it brings... Uh, it, this is one thing... With Giratina Altered, you want to look for things Giratina Origin can't do. So there are a few. Scarf Giratina Altered from uh, now I'll just call it Giratina. Scarf is really cool, really hard to bring, uh, or not really hard to bring down, uh, a surprisingly good Draco spammer. I mean, it's not very strong in comparison to its Draco spamming brethren, but it's still usually using a neutral or super effective Draco, so it hits hard, especially with hazard support. Uh, being able to Scarf is something Giratina Origin can't do because it has to hold Grisius Orb. Uh, and... Uh, the main thing people do with Giratina, though, is sub-protect, because Giratina Origin also can't hold lefties, so you run um, sub-protect and then Will-O-Wisp or Call Mind. Both can be really annoying. Again, both really don't like support Dialga, although Will-O-Wisp at least burns it, and uh, that's why I like that set alongside uh, Lugia, because with Will-O-Wisp on Giratina, then you burn it, and then Lugia becomes a lot more threatening. So the two can kind of come together to fix their issues a little bit. Uh, yeah, that sense really cool. Sub Protect Lewis, D Pulse. Unless you face Heatran, of course. Yeah, Heatran is uh, another annoying poke for the Lugias and Giratinas of the world. It, uh, Lug uh, Heatran is, shuts down a lot of defensive stuff really nastily. So you gotta have a good plan for Heatran, for sure. Especially because a lot of time you're running these kinds of guys on uh, Rain. Or, sorry, on Sun. So. But, I mean, that's uh, natural. You can also run Roar on. Uh, like, I've uh, thought about, like, a. A more offensive roar variant of Garatina, just uh, to get past not just uh, well Heatran's going to taunt you. I was thinking not just a roar Dialga, but also Skarmory. Because Skarmory can be annoying, but it's really hard to fit theoretically. It, it would have to be something like Sub Protect Willow uh, Roar, which you know doesn't sound good. And as soon as you ditch any other move, then you lose effectiveness significantly. Uh, the potential is there, though. Giratina O has a ton of potential waiting to just be abused. I've also really liked a, a kind of mid-game set with either Haban or Custat Berry, and you just kind of go one for one with a lot of things, kind of like Dialga, except you don't need... Uh, you take Dracos and stuff, even though you're weak to them, and then you Custap on the next thing, and then you Destiny Bond, and you two for one, and it's beautiful. Or you Haban and just take everything in the world. It's crazy. Uh... Like even a plus two Garchomp or something, and you Draco again. It's strong enough when you're facing off other drag against other dragon types, and you spread Will O Wisp still, and you still have Shadow Sneak for that priority, albeit a lot weaker, but still a priority is good. And uh, yeah, so I think Giratina 
has a lot of flaws, but also a lot of potential, and that's why it's up here in B+. All right, next up we have Quagsire, which is... Because uh, Gastrodon Storm Drain does not absorb water in Gen 4, then we have Quagsire. Quagsire is great. Uh, it's... It uh, handles Kyogre, it's immune to Thunder, it has instant recovery, it has the Stab EQ plus Toxic combination. It's great. Uh, I it re A lot of people really like it on Sand, and it's great on Sun as well. I mean, every team likes a Kyogre answer. Very resilient. Stealth Rock resistance is huge. Absolutely enormous. Uh, so, yeah. One thing I really enjoy on... Uh, uh, what's this face? Quagsire is Protect. Now the standard set is EQ, Toxic, Recover, Encore. And Encore is really cool because it messes with things like Sub Kyogre, Resting Kyogre, Manaphy, uh, theoretically something like a Sleeping Bulk Up Dialga. But I think that those Pokemon can generally be dealt with through other means. Uh, like as soon as Kyogre rests, I mean Quagsire is not a great Manaphy answer at all anyway. As soon as Kyogre Rest is a lot more vulnerable, you should be dealing with Dialga another way. So I generally really like Protect, simply because Sub-Kyogre is incredibly rare for reasons we already mentioned, and the extra, not just the extra passive damage, but the extra recovery for Quagsire is huge. Suddenly you're able to shrug off things like uh, Dialga that you otherwise might not be able to from the sheer power of Draco Meteor. That extra recovery is a really, really, really big deal. So I do like Protect on Quagsire. Other than that, it's a great uh, Kyogre answer, and just answer to, you know, all the rain and water and thunder spam that you face a lot of. It's surprisingly hard to take out for a lot. Like, a Scarf Dialga is not going to beat Quagsire one-on-one -on -one at all. And with Protect, then you can even switch into Draco. So, uh, you need absolute max special defense, of course, but yeah, Quagsire is great. Really, really great. And fits on spiking teams really nicely. Uh, Ludicolo is like Quagsire, it's not Stealth Rock resistant, or Sand Immune, uh, but it's great on Rain, and with T-Spikes, because it heals like hell thanks to Rain Dish, and it has that wonderful uh, quadruple water resistance. Uh, it doesn't, it has a neutrality to Thunder instead of uh, an immunity, which, you know, isn't great, but it has Leech Seed, so, and there are basically no Grass types in Ubers. There's only Shame and Sky, and you know you run Ice Beam, and even that doesn't want to switch in. Although you got to get out of the way of Air Slash, but Shame and Sky is rare too. So generally, you Leech Seed for free, and you wear everything down really nicely with Spikes and T Spikes. It's a really devastating poke to face. It can be very hard to take down. Switching into, I mean, talk about uh, eating up Draco Meteors because it heals even more, and it has Protect and Leech Seed. So yeah, uh, Rayqu or Ludicolo is really great. You can Grass Knot with Stab for things like, um, what's it called? Uh, resting Kyogres. I mean, Lychee is going to annoy them anyway, but uh, you can also run Ice Beam for things like Rayquaza, whose Airlock uh, removes your Rain Dish, and uh, the other thing, Shame and Sky. But yeah, Ludicolo is like qu a different kind of Quagsire. And, uh, except you have to use it, on, well, you don't have to use it on Rain, but Kyogre isn't as omnipresent as it once was, so I think nowadays you should only use it on Rain. And you don't use it on sand, whereas you can use Quagsire on sand or sun. So, Manaphy, uh, kind of like a second Kyogre. And uh, with rest, you're a great Dark Ride check, and you're massively threatening with Calm Mind. Don't use Tail Glow, it's only plus two in Gen 4. Calm Mind is really great because it lets you shrug off Thunders. So, Calm Mind, Rest, Surf, and then, you know, usually Ice Beam. Actually, no, yes, definitely Ice Beam, so you can actually handle or threaten a. Uh, what's its face? Um. The Lottie Twins. Although Toxic is surprisingly... Well, it also hit Dialga. But Toxic is surprisingly good to permanently cripple the Lottie Twins as well as something like Kyogre or Ludicolo. So, I've liked that as well. Uh, Energy Ball is also viable because it hits Kyogre and Groudon. So, uh, so... Or, no, not, not Energy Ball, sorry. Grass Knot. That's the one you want to use. So, uh, yeah, sometimes... Uh, you can run some elaborate setup with Pursuit, like T-Tar and Rain uh, with Manaphy, so you can remove the Lottie Twins more easily. So Manaphy definitely requires a lot of support, because a lot does nat a lot of the Uber metagame does check it naturally pretty nicely. You know, Dialga, Palkia, Lottie Twins. But it definitely can take over games really nicely. And that defensive utility is just phenomenal. Um, yeah, against Darkrai in particular. Oh, uh, and the Airlock thing makes me remember that... I should have said one of the really cool things about Rayquaza is that it, it shuts down the Swift Swimmers. Uh, 
that's and that's really huge for offensive teams uh, that otherwise I mean the whole point of the Swiss swimmers is to run through offense so being able to neutralize them with uh, Rayquaza is a really big deal all right so speaking of Swift swim Kingdra it's uh, fairly simple it's like Kabutops except it rains down super effective Draco meteors or it rains down Draco meteors that a lot can't switch into since as we've already established with the similar similarly typed Palkia Nothing is going to resist the Water Dragon combo in Ubers, so you just rain down stab boosted Hydros and Surfs, or just, you know, powerful Draco Meteors. So you, I generally like Specs. The Life Orb mix stuff is, I think, a waste. I think Specs is too good to pass up. Draco, Dragon Pulse, Hydro, Surf. All you need. Uh, theoretically, I guess you can Ice... No, don't, don't Ice Beam. Just run those. Uh, yeah, so Kingdra's great, and its main thing over Kabutops, in addition to, you know, attacking on the special side, is that its quadruple water resist means that it can switch into Kyogre in a pinch, which is really cool. Whereas Kabutops defensive utility is more uh, resisting E-speed, so it can check SD Lucario in rain. Uh, Kingdra's also got a lot higher speed, so it's better outside of rain. Like, it'll still outrun a lot of the slower... the, the base 90s that don't invest a lot of speed, it's, it's still gonna outrun them. Uh, or actually, it, it outruns the base 90s that, uh, wait, Kyogre, no, 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 Kingdra is 95, yeah. Uh, so, it's going to outspeed those guys, yeah, okay, sorry, I'm, I was just making sure in my head that it's 95. Uh, it outruns the base 90s that don't go plus speed, even outside of range, so that's cool. So, even if, in a one-on-one -on -one against Groudon, you could just Draco Meteor's face in. Uh, same with stuff like even more offensive, most offensive variants of Dialga, so, uh, yeah, Shaman Sky, I mean, talk about lack of defensive utility, sadly, uh, that, in addition to, it, it's not just the Rock's weakness, but the fact it doesn't really switch into much of anything, however, uh, with the hazard support, it can be really annoying with that sub-seed set, because it just, I mean, you leech seed Dialga, and I mean, you don't want to take a Draco or something, but you can just start flinching it down, and can be very annoying. I like Leech Protect, actually. That set's really, really nasty, because you kind of make up for your uh, propensity for getting outrun and checked by Scarfers. You know, you don't have to protect around them as much anymore. And if you Leech Eat them on the Switch, that's more recovery and more damage on them. So, uh, and as we've established with Ludicolo, it's very free to Leech Seed. You, you don't have to worry about something like Ferrothorn coming in and uh, sitting on you. So, yeah. Uh, Shaman, really, Scarf Shaman is also cool because it, uh, it's got a great speed tier, I will give it that, because it sits between Darkrai and Mewtwo, and outrunning Darkrai is phenomenal, so you're getting the jump on pretty much everything, and those, you know, uh, Spadef dropping Seed Flares can be really nasty, especially with Air Slash, it's just hard to, you know, get it to go, you know, uh, I mean, even a minus two Earth Power does scare, uh, Dialga, I, I think, like, all out, Attacking Seed Flare, Air Slash, Earth Power, HP, usually Fire, and Sun. I think that's a pretty good set. With lefties, though. Don't run Life Orb. You're just going to get switched around, and then Giratina Origin will finish you off. Um, yeah, I, th I think that's a potentially pretty decent set, but it's still got so many flaws still. I mean, the Lottie Twins, even if you're on HP Ice, it's it, it, there's always going to be something. So I think the sub -C set is okay. I mean, all its sets are pretty cool. And Seed Flare threatening... Uh, Groudon and Kyogre as hard as it does is really nice. I also think a really cool move on it, a last move on it, is Leaf Storm. Because the extra power, the extra instant power can be really nasty. So uh, you can get a jump on something. Uh, potentially get the jump on something that expects to be able to tank you. So it definitely deserves some experimentation. You could feasibly do something like Spec Seed Flare. I'm, that's probably really annoying. And Scarf is pretty cool because it has Healing Wish and it cleans up hard late game. That's, I think, Shaman's most defined... Uh, Role in that, yeah, it it it's sub seed set or protect leech seed set can be annoying, but uh, with scarf you actually threaten to clean games up because you're faster than everything. You outrun even the swift swimmers. You outrun even scarf dark eye, which is killer, and uh, you outrun uh, rock polish ground on and instantly KO it with seed flare. And uh, yeah, so I think scarf shaman is pretty good. It, it, don't get me wrong, it's still a, a big uh, threat, but you don't really have to think about it in the team builder, which is the same of the other B plus pokes, for the most part. It, again, like the other B plus pokes, a lot of potential, hard to consistently bring it out. Uh, but, I mean, the potential is definitely there. Alright, down to B. Uh, Blissey is markedly worse from 
the main generation where it and Lugia were staples, but it's still very, very irritating. Again, uh, support Dialga getting up hazards and then roaring everything around is a real pain for it, as is the influx of toxic spikes. But it can definitely fit on some really nice uh, teams, like uh, alongside Tentacruel itself, so it doesn't have to fear uh, posing T-Spikes and loves using it of its own. Obviously, it's a great Draco Meteor Sponge. It's got a lot to watch out for. I mean, Brick Breaks and Outrages and, you know, Groudon and Garchomp and Lucario. And, uh, yeah, it can definitely be messed with really easily. But it can also be really annoying. Wish Support is phenomenal. Stealth Rock, Toxic, Instant Recovery, you know, Heal Bell if you really want. Yeah, so Blissey, harder to fit, again, because it only really fits on those really bulky teams. And uh, not even all of those, but definitely has its place. Uh, you know, being able to shrug off Draco and support the team as well as it does is, of course, a very unique niche. Quillfish has been getting really popular, not necessarily because it's a huge threat in and of itself with Swift Swim. It is. I mean, it's annoyed like hell by Dialga and Garatina Origin, which is, of course, a massive pain. But Quillfish's main niche is that it absorbs toxic spikes, and that is enormous. Uh, as uh, we've mentioned how big a deal Toxic Spikes are throughout this whole video. So picking up Toxic Spikes is really cool, and it can even set Toxic Spikes of its own. Uh, so a, mi a mid-game set of Waterfall, Poison Jab, Explosion, I guess you could fit uh, Swords Dance over Poison Jab if you really wanted, or uh, Spikes, T-Spikes, you know, play around with it as you see fit. As long as it has Waterfall and Boom and, you know, one Hazard, then it's going to uh, do well. Usually you pair it with a different spiker, so you just want to throw in T-Spikes just as kind of a bonus. Uh, not that, you know, having a second spiker is going to be bad, you know, extra layers in case you don't want to do anything else with it. But being able to pick up T-Spikes and naturally outspeed all those guys, um, I, I guess you do like Poison Jab to finish off the Lotties. And uh, actually have something to hit the dragons with, most dragons with, beside, well, just Palkia and the Lotties. I mean, those are big, but yeah, I'm not much of a Quillfish guy. I definitely recognize its place, though. Uh, yeah, Poison Jab, probably fine, just, I, I don't think it's super necessary, because threatening the Lotties with Boom is nice enough. Pick up the T-Spikes, you know, threaten something out, maybe get a Boom off, and you've done your job with Quillfish. Hard to fit, for sure, doesn't have a ton of utility, but that picking up T-Spikes thing is really big. Because uh, you just completely throw a wrench in the plans of those teams that plan to T-Spike and then sub-protect until they win games. So... Uh, there's also lead quillfish, which is quite cool because it threatens, it gets up spikes pretty nicely, and it can also threaten to get up T spikes. Uh, not as good now, I don't think, but you know, with the influx of Tentacruel, but it can still uh, spike and pay, it has payback in Aqua Jet for the Dio forms and Frostlass, which is nice. So, uh, yeah, quillfish definitely decent. Mew, cool lead. It's kind of like a very bulky Azelf from OU. You get up rocks, you taunt. You threaten boom, you can U-turn, you can Psychic, you can Fire Blast. Uh, psychic is nice for destroying Tentacruel, well not destroying, you 2-KO it. So it can't spin on you, that's the big one. You get up rocks, and then you Psychic and you threaten it out. You Fire Blast any fortress that thinks it's safe. Uh, but most of the time, you just want to threaten things with boom, and then U-turn out on the threat of boom. Because you don't want to just boom into Giratina Origin. That's the big one. So yeah, Mew is a good for you know strong offense team. Sets the pace nicely. You U-turn out of well, you rocks on DOA. You uh, either rocks or U-turn on DOS, depending. Because if you U-turn into Giratina Origin or Scizor or you know uh, I don't know Scarf Darkrai or uh, like even Lucario, I guess. Well, it's not bulky enough. It's usually Giratina Origin, but uh, if you U-turn on Dio's taunt, then it can potentially be in a really bad position. So you can often take advantage of that and get up rocks early in the game. I mean, you don't love rocks versus rocks and spikes, but at least you've gotten the rocks. And you will be set enough to trade with the team you're building around Mew to where it's not going to be enough of a detriment, and you're just going to enjoy having uh, that. So, yeah, rocks Mew, good lead. Very, very nice. Nice against the lead Kyogre Influx. I mean, until they Water Spout, which has been seen once or twice. But uh, that's also on the rare side. So, uh, yeah, Mew lead, awesome. Frostlass really doesn't like T-Tar lead, really doesn't like Darkrai lead, but really nice against most other things because it's self-spin block. So you're good against Tentacruel. You're great against Rayquaza because you have... Uh, uh, you, you are immune to E-Speed, so you can spike and then attack and break its Sash. 
And uh, with Icy Wind and Shadow Ball, then you limit Deoxys speed and Deoxys attack to one layer. They can't E speed. They can't attack and then E speed you either. So yeah, uh, Frost Nest is a really cool lead. Its downsides are really nasty, but because you can't even you know break Titar Sash or do anything against Darkrai, but it is really nice against pretty much every other lead. You know, just getting up spikes and then switching out against something like Giratina Origin is good enough, or Kyogre or something. Because you're going to be switching to uh, your Rocks, Dialga, or Groudon anyway. So, yeah, Frost is very cool. Omastar, I think, is underappreciated in Jet 4 Ubers. Uh, I have tried out, like, a Rocks, T-Spike, Sash mid-game set once Rain is already active, because it has Swift Swim. And that's pretty cool. You know, it's got that Kabutops typing, so you can check uh, Lucario, which is nice. But I think Specs is really dangerous, because it's like Kingdra... Except it uh, it checks Lucario, but it, it's like Kingdra that checks Lucario, and it's a lot stronger. The jump from base ninety five special attack to base one twenty is it one twenty? No, 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 one fifteen. Sorry, uh, it's Starmie. A uh, Starmie speed special attack three sixty one. So yeah, uh, with Specs Hydro, you just dev. I mean, even Dialga doesn't like switching into it, and it's so fast and so strong. So yeah, I think it, it definitely has a niche as a Swift Swimmer. Uh, Cloister lead, not as common as much with the, it, it's kind of like Quillfish, except it trades Explosion and, uh, Poison Typing for Rapid, well, it doesn't trade Explosion, it just doesn't fit it usually. Um, I guess Quillfish doesn't boom too often either, although you definitely can, but, uh, you, the thing Cloister does is it spins. It threatens to spin on DOS. So you also have the Payback plus Priority combo, this time with Ice Shard, and then you Spike, and then you can also T spike, but you can also fit in uh, ice or sorry rapid spin, which I think uh, would be preferable right now with all the tentacles around. And I mean, you could also go spikes, T spikes, rapid spin, and then just uh, bluff one of the other moves. You know, you, I guess you don't need to priority the Dio forms down if you're just threatening to spin their hazards all day long. So. Yeah, Cloister definitely has a niche. Gliss score is hard to make use of consistently, but it can potentially be really annoying. It's really nice to wall a lot of Groudons. Its Toxic EQ combo is really nasty. It's really tough to handle for a lot of bulkier stuff. It finds it really hard to switch into. Gliss score Heatran is a very annoying combo uh, on Sun teams. Again, it's really annoying with Hazards. And with Spadef, it can shrug off Scarf Draco Meteors just well enough. One-on-one, -on -one, obviously. You don't switch in on them. But yeah, Gliscor, very, uh, you know, niche, but definitely exists. Clefable is going to have a niche because hazards are so big a deal in this tier, and it is, of course, immune to them, and it's got the special bulk to shrug off Scarf Draco Meteors, and it's got a lot of other cools, like not too cool tools, like uh, Knock Off, Taunt, not Taunt, um, Encore, Wish, T-Wave, so yeah, Clef definitely has a place. Uh, you know, niche definitely needs more explanation, but I have really liked it. It's uh, it's like it's not quite like Blissey, but it makes up for that with the sheer offensive pressure it brings with knockoff and encore, and its inability to get pressured by um, hazards of any kind or even sand. So uh, that's a really big deal. Then there's uh, Doug, which has a small niche with uh, well, it can run Adamant first of all because it's not really trapping anything in the. You know, th there's nothing, I mean, uh, yeah, you still outrun Garchomp, actually, and you're not really trapping anything in the 340s, you're not trapping the Lottie, so you don't need to hit the 350s, nothing really in the 360s either, I mean, uh, Scarf Tar is very rare, uh, I don't think you really need to account for it, and, you know, you're not outrunning anything, there's nothing really faster than Scarf Tar before Darkrai, which you're not even touching even with Jolly, so, Adam and Band is definitely cool, because, this way, you actually trap Dialga, and you can finish off a lot of things. You can finish off a weakened Kyogre, Palkia, even like a weakened Garchomp, and uh, it has a lot of... I mean, just scroll through this list. Removing Blissey is really nice, and uh, yeah, a bulky Jirachi, of course, and uh, we can even, hell, even a weakened Groudon, in addition to, you know, Dialga, Kyogre, Palkia. These are a lot of good Pokemon that's going to be removing. I mean, Titar, of course. So, Heatran. So, yeah, uh, Dugshire has a lot of targets. Hard to get it on the field, of course. But, you know, with all the choice, um, with all the choice, uh, Thunders flying around, then you will get an opportunity. You'll be able to remove even Scarfers, uh, which is really cool. Especially if you pair it with Protect users. So, Darkshire definitely has niche. Cresselia is like Lugia, except it's not Stealth Rock weak, and it heals way better thanks to Moonlight. 
Uh, you use it on Sun only, obviously, because you need you need Groudon as a partner, so Moonlight actually heals. But other than that, it's like Lugia. But uh, yeah, not uh, weak to Stone Edge either, which is nice. So it's a great counter to Garchomp and Groudon, and you know, with HP Fire, it can check Lucario well enough. Uh, you know, it's flawed, obviously, but it, it's not as punished uh, for switch, getting double switched on because of its Rock's neutrality as opposed to weakness it makes a big difference. So, yeah, Cress is uh, underrated. I, th I think it's very cool. Metagross is cool, has a lot of cool options. It's a great lead with Meteor Mash and Bullet Punch, limit things to one layer of hazards. It can explode. Uh, you know, Giratina doesn't love switching into its Meteor Mash. Uh, it can get up rocks. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, some people have messed around with things like Rock Polish and Scarf, which I think are decent. And I think there's also definitely potential for it to act as a sort of pseudo Bronzong with a lot of special defense investment. Like a cross between uh, Bronzong and Jirachi. Uh, you know, because it can switch into Dracos with special defense investment, and it can explode. Uh, I mean, it's affected by EQ, but, uh, you know, it's also quite strong as well. So, I think there's potential for that. So, Metagross is definitely a cool Pokemon. Uh, Salamence is niche in Ubers, even though it's, it is an Uber Pokemon. It's mo more or less outdone by Rayquaza in terms of sheer power, but as a Dragon Dancer, it gets the jump on... Um, well, first of all, you, you pair it with Rayquaza most of the time for, for not the most optimal team, but that 100 speed is really nice because we've already mentioned the uh, the importance of getting the jump on everything. So you get the jump on not just Scarf Dialga and uh, Scarf Palkia, or not Palkia, Scarf Dialga and Kyogre, but you get the immediate jump on Rayquaza. And ba with base 100, then you have to, you force Palkia and Drachi to tie with you at best. Although, ideally, you trap those with Wobbuffet, which you also need to set it up in the first place, and then you just go to town. But yeah, a Salamence, uh, not seen very much, which is a shame, because it's so cool. But uh, yeah, you can. It, it definitely is a small place. Not much of one, but definitely a small one. I'm sure you can make use of some non-DD set to really make use of that 100 speed. Like, I'm sure there's some potential for, like, a band variant or something. Or, uh, you know, specs, maybe. Who knows? Uh... Mixed, yeah, probably probably good enough. That speed is just such a big deal. Like a Rayquaza that is a little weaker and doesn't have priority, but also sits at 100 speed, might be really nice. And Intimidate is, of course, an incredible ability in all sorts of situations. So, uh, Infernape, not much. I mean, Stab Close Combat, great for Dialga. Powered up by Groudon Sun, Close Combat threatens Kyogre. And what it's what it mainly does is it threatens uh, the things that check it, like Giratina. Origin and uh, the Lottie Twins with U-Turn, uh, so that's really cool. Uh, and for it's a very niche Pokemon, and theoretically you can Shadow Claw those guys. Like Banded Shadow Claw and Furnape is one of the cool things about Ubers, one of those little niche things. But uh, it's it's limited, but that speed tier is really cool because it outruns Garchomp, which is awesome, and it's fast and it, it threatens a lot. So definitely has a little bit of a niche. Obama Snow is like a worse variant of uh, Ludicolo and Quagsire because it answers, it's a great Kyogre counter, perfect even, but it's Stealth Rock weak. However, you make up for this through Leech Seed and you bring Hail, so you chip everything because there are no Ice types in Ubers. So, uh, yeah, you Leech Seed things and the Leech Seed damage is accentuated by Hail. And with spikes, it's just brutal and protect, and you even have a nice little priority ice shard to finish off a weakened Garchomp or something. So there's that, and uh, definitely worth use on a team or two. Uh, you know, it, talk about wearing the opposing team down. So, and then there's Magnazone, who is a very small niche for removing the steels. You know, Skarmory. Uh, sometimes, a, lo a lot of times, you can Magnet Rise for Bronzong. You should, in fact. Uh, you can remove a lot of Jirachis, and with HP Ground and uh, Dialga, you, you actually remove Dialga, fair, not well, because it can roar you out and then switch out, but like uh, if it's weakened, then you can finish it off with uh, Dragon Pull, or not with Dragon Pulse, with, with HP Ground, and uh, it's good even against offensive Dialga, it removes Scarf Dialga, locked into Draco Meteor, uh, minus two Dialga, even mix sets aren't going to break you in rain. You know, minus two Fire Blast and Sun will still destroy you, but, you know, that's why in Rain. So, yeah, Magnezone definitely has a very interesting niche. It needs to be explored more. The Steel Trapping thing, I mean, being able to trap Dialga, I mean, that's why Magnezone and Dugtrio both have niches, really. If it wasn't for that, then they would be, you know, even more subpar, but as it stands, then they can potentially do that. And Magnezone is really cool because the only things that resist Garchomp's stab combo are Skarmory and Bronzong, and Magnezone removes, Magnezone removes both of those handily. 
So yeah. All right, that's pretty much everything that I wanted to mention. Uh, I mean, there are other like very niche things, but I thought these were the most things uh, most worthy of discussion. So this video wound up being a lot longer than I intended it to. But uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, long live this tier, and I will be making a lot more videos on it very soon. And if this video is old, then those videos are already up, so you can find them with a little browsing. So, thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you next time.